All right. We are back after an unexpected week off. Judd's Buds episode fuck my life. Uh 105 aka the Wayne Gretzky plus Dakota Mermis episode carbon copies. Um Jesus. as always, well actually, as usual, your host Spoke Z joined by my good buddy Mr. At State of Hoppy Hoppy. How the fuck are we doing? We're doing shit's crazy lately, but we're powering through. You're here. Yeah. I'm here. I, we checked, I guess, the two more important boxes. And I don't know, you your audio might even be coming through your computer right now, but oh, well, that's good. We'll persevere. Let me we try to fix that live. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't know why it sounds oh. weird. That's no, all right. That's what uh, the people are here for. There's always next year. Um yeah, so we're back oh. after a week off. My bad. Had some stuff to take care of last minute. Um, but we're here this week, and there's plenty of news. We're probably, in theory, the plan is we might go a little bit long just to make up for it. Um, but as everyone knows, we should never plan on anything um, in this show because that ends up working out about 9% of the time uh hoppy how's your week going what you up to dude our plan is to have a plan and my week is chaos because uh this is the first week that the wife is back at work so mm. doing that whole thing but uh you know what we're we're getting through that'll work that'll work um before yeah. we get into anything that we were going to talk about i just want to say it's very funny this is like this is out coming out of nowhere here but um it just hit me like again. I have been basically MIA for like a week. I've barely been able to even like watch as much hockey as usual. So every time I go, I'm like, oh, fuck, I need to at least check what's going on here. It is unbelievable. And, um, hobby, it's, it's to our preference, to be honest with you. As the wild started looking like they just might have a chance to get into the playoffs, all of the teams directly in front of them that in theory are like, they might be able to catch if they want to like sneak in and then get the shit kicked out of in round one. Um, they're all playing each other and then going to overtime. It is fucking unbelievable. And then <laughs> the wild just is like, and we're just going to lose. I don't know. We'll just, we're just going to lose games. <laughs> it is fucking insane. It's the most Minnesota wild thing I've ever seen. Like Vegas and Nashville, sick game last night. Or if you're listening to this on whatever day it drops Friday, uh, yeah. fuck, whatever it happens, whatever it is, whenever whatever. Happens. Sick game. Nashville's a problem. Um, but like that was it was just insane. I was like, of course, like why, why would this not go to overtime? You know, like why would I ever think it might not? Um, right. But I mean, at this point, it seems like it, I didn't say it's, it's set, and I think that is <clears> fine. <throat> for the minnesota wild as annoying as as the season this season's been but um we'll see we'll see for me man though it's one of those things uh if you're listening right or watching right now on wednesday as we go live uh earlier today we dropped uh episode six of fellowship of the rink and like this takeaway is there's plenty of teams that like get in and go on runs and everyone's like, Oh, you just got to get in. And then it's anyone's game. It's like, has any team really shocked you when they've gone on a run? Like I'll be honest, like Florida, I didn't expect to necessarily go on a run, but if you look at their roster, it's like, okay, I get it. Right. The one I always go back to is 2012. Dude, LA Kings as an eight seed, I was fucking hammering them as I'm sure many were like, that's not like a, a brainiac take from me, but as an eight seed, they were for me, like a top four team in those playoffs. You get those kind of odds. I'll play that every time because their roster was built so perfect. And it's one of those teams that started cold, got hot at the right time. And you felt like you were going to ride the wave. This wild roster, even if healthy, you don't look at them and say like, yeah, this is a team that's going to win it, win a series. Like what's the point of even getting in at that point? And I know the team and the players are never going to view it that way, but from a fan's perspective, like I don't want to watch the wild get the piss beaten out of them in round one, maybe win a game. Like, no, <laughs> I'm out pass. I mean, especially 
this year especially just because like first of all the central division murderers row with the playoff teams and now you've got like yeah. what edmonton is doing is terrifying vancouver just like never they had like one bad streak this year and then they're like actually no we're just we're still we're just nasty still i guess dude uh, I got, on vancouver we got to pause on that because it you hear people talking now about who should be the coach of the year and like all the awards right but coach of the year and people are like I don't know, dude. You look at Andrew Burnett. He had a roster that no one expected to contend. He's got to be the winner. You look at a guy like uh, Rick Tockett, like he he shouldn't because look at his roster. Dude, coming into the season, no one gave Vancouver a chicken's dick chance of doing anything. And now that's like such a distant memory because like, oh, look how good they've been all year. Yeah, maybe it's the fucking coach. I don't know. <laughs> I well, the one that's driving me up a fucking wall, and I love the guy, so I feel bad that I'm like getting annoyed by the hype. Spencer Carberry, I'm sorry if you somehow make the playoffs despite having a fucking negative goal differential. You like, I, I'm not, <laughs> I can't do that. Like, that's that's they, nerd, that's GM of the year, that's GM of the year yeah. for <laughs> signing the fucking guy I said on this very show. Sign him, sign him, sign him. And that's Charlie Lindgren, that guy. And it's funny, like, I, I don't agree, but I, I love the, the concept. Jeff Merrick keeps on saying, like, the Hart Trophy shouldn't be going out to these superstars. The Hart Trophy should go to the $1 million AAV goalie that torches for you. It's kind of true. Like, that's exactly yeah. what he has done. He is the sole reason that that team is where they are, given the injuries, the setbacks, Losing Backstrom, Kuznetsov, like, hmm, weird. He's doing okay now. It was clearly a Washington thing. Ovechkin's back on track now, but, like, the start of the year, the fact that this team's even in the conversation is Charlie Lindgren through and through. And he's still only qualified as their 1A, not their 1. So. Yeah, right. But, yeah. yeah that's, and that's, again. That's Arbery. Goaltending yeah. solves all, and it ruins coaches. Look at every coach yeah. firing. Bad goal tending, period. Hmm, that would never happen here. No, that's never happened in Minnesota. Um, never happened in Minnesota or Edmonton or New Jersey. Yeah. No, none yeah. of those teams have fired coaches for goaltending. Right. Um, I do feel like at this point, too, just looking at both conferences, there's maybe one or not – in the West, there's a massive gap between the playoff teams and the teams that are not going to make the playoffs. Like, I think there is a big gap between <laughs> even, like, St. Louis. Uh, like, because, I mean, what Nashville is doing is insane. But at the same yeah, time, I, like, I they, and they did. And here's the thing, like, the ads, like, that's the definition of, like, a retool, right? Like, because they, they go out and they don't give, like, crazy term or money to O'Reilly, Gustav Nyquist. Phil Forsberg is just unfucking believable. He always has been, always will be. But like, they didn't go out and just like tank. Obviously, like last year, even I liked their approach to the deadline where they bring in some guys, but still like pick up assets in the meantime, like not really going for anything crazy. But um, but I like, I mean, at the deadline they go and they bring in fucking Zucker, like decent little. I was like, hey, let's see if like the mojo just keeps going here. But um. Even them, like I think, there is a gap, like a pretty big one between them and like St. Louis, Minnesota. Because um, I'll be on the record once again, I've never at any point believed in the St. Louis Blues for the last like two or three years at this point. To be honest with you, oh, but they've actually looked better than I would have thought. But I'm, I'm right. with you. Yeah. I think I had St. Louis like the number seven team in the Central. <laughs> like I, yeah, I'm right. not opposed to how they built their roster and. It's worked, but I think what's interesting, though, is you're completely correct. I think that gap exists in the East after the top, like, four teams for me. Uh, may maybe well, that I'm saying, I'm, right there, but... Like, I, I think the only team that I'm like, yeah, they could sneak, they could get in is Detroit. Like, and if they were, if they got in over Washington, I'd be like, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's But there, that's the only team. Like, I... That's it. Other than that, it's like, there's, I still feel like there is... 
a big I, I might be crazy. You could talk me into Buffalo. You could talk me into it. I mean, they're fucked. Um, yeah, but uh, I think, though, it, it's the flip of last year, right? We've got everyone loaded up in the West, and whoever comes out of the East is probably going to do it pretty clean. For me, there's four teams that are really contending in the East. There's a couple other ones. Like, no one wants to play Tampa by any stretch, but that's not necessarily one that I'm looking at as, like, a true contender. You know what I mean? Like, for me, uh, you tell me if I'm wrong. I'm saying it's Florida, Boston, New York, and Carolina. Am I missing one? Uh, No, yeah. I mean, like, I could talk myself into Tampa because, like, just watching them play recently too. It's like, oh yeah, no, there's still a problem. And I mean, helps to have Vasilevsky who has had up and down. Like it's crazy. There's some games this year. It's like, oh, yep, there he is. That's him. Okay. And then he'll have like one bad game, which like, even like if he lets in one bad one, you're like, whoa, he's off. It's funny. That's how fucking unbelievable he is. And like, I mean, his playoff track record is, I mean, it speaks for itself, but I could see that. I mean, that is a fuck. If you get, if you finish first in your division and your reward is to play the Tampa Bay fucking lightning in that the sucks. first round, that like sucks. that blows. And I mean, in the West, I if mean, you have no, to play I Vegas, Vegas. Vegas. Fucking Vegas. Vegas. it's unbelievable, dude. Uh, um, Mateo brings up a really important point here, though, Z. How can we make this about Toronto? Um, I do actually already have a, a comment queued up here that I think will address that really well. Integrity Farms. If my dad was rich, I'd be oh a 50 God. goal scorer. Uh, what what a take. And I will say, <laughs> I'm not even going to say his fucking name. I can't. I just can't. Uh, he's. This is like the 50th time he said that about Zach Hyman. And there's a very weird segment of hockey Twitter who is just like, no, it's all nepotism. It's like, Will you go fuck your like shut the fuck up? Oh, you're right. He just walked into the NHL then. It's a very weird segment of fucking hockey Twitter. It's like, uh Yeah, dude. And I have totally- rich parents and they ran the team and I made all the team because my dad was the coach or like whatever, ran the program. It's like, bro, how miserable are you? Also, why are you taking that video outside? Are like what are you up like you just couldn't That's- hold it any longer? No, that is the only proof that he has that he's ever gone outside and touched grass. Yeah, but it's fucking unbelievable. It, it, it's it's one of those things too. Like, yeah, Daddy went in and said, "You know what? I'm gonna pay you guys to play him with Austin Matthews all year. I'm gonna pay you to play him with Drysital and McDavid regularly." And it's even crazier that it happened the exact same. Like, wasn't it the same day that Sam Reinhardt hit fifty? And I don't think he grew up without means. Like, no, I think his dad years. may have played. I hockey, think maybe his dad might be like the, the richest sport period because, oh, ice time is expensive. If you live in Canada, it's basically a cult where they force you into spending all of your life savings to even be able to play, which is a joke in itself. I'm sure Isha will beyond rant about that on Monday. So I'll, I'll save that for him. But it's just insane to like point that direction. It, I, I, not, and and I'm telling you for, me for years. No, but I, and this is what's crazy. I know that I've seen that person say that about Zach Hyman several times. And I'm like, this is such a fucking weird hill you need to die on. Like, it is so weird. It's like, this is my this is my number one thing I will always stick with. Nothing's going to change my mind. I'm sorry. 50 fucking ducks in the NHL only because his dad let him make every fucking up. like fuck off and then of course that night he scores the ot winner smell you later for his 50th like so or whatever 51st maybe um it's fucking unbelievable i can't like, it's just that shit drives me so fucking crazy it's like why you are so fucking miserable like just do literally anything else but um he also had a couple bangers earlier in the year about some of like the bruins and how they're all because he's a habs guy but uh how they're like bad like people it's a weird that's the the path that usually goes down it's like the human being or it's well, like that's weird you know that's what, weird though? like that's a weird thing to fucking they're they're making videos about the bachelor so they must be awful people and <laughs> i'm sorry dude is that not the most minnesota thing ever i i'm sure you didn't watch any of it but i know you get uh tied in with uh sarah's whole uh kerfuffle yeah. around it but like dude straight up 
that's like the one thing I've been doing the last like year or two with my wife. It's like kind of, okay, that's me paying my penance for the time that I sink into podcasts. I have to watch The Bachelor with her. It's not so a bad trade-off, dude. Like, could I, be worse. I, I, well, The Bachelorette's way worse. Because yeah, it's I don't know. Yeah. meatheads yelling at each other like girls being bitches and going behind each other's back. Like, that's kind of fun. <laughs> but yeah. this girl from Minnesota who like has had serious huh. like – physical issues like a lot of doctor stuff had like had to have an implant so she could hear and then she's just this like sweetheart and she is the front runner the whole way like everyone says she's gonna win he is all about her and then you hit the finale this past monday and like he could not be more obvious that he's like not about her like with everything he's saying the body language the vibe and like she knew it too she's like something's different and I don't like it and to the point where she goes up and they like do a final proposal thing at the end, you know, and like, it's a whole like grand stage. It's pretty much like he is going to talk to both of you and he's either proposing or telling you he's never going to see you again. Like th there's no in between, which is crazy. Cause you're both like, think that it's like set. She goes up and he starts talking and saying nice things. She's like, Oh, I appreciate that. And like, she says some nice things back and she's like, but I know you're not picking me. And he stops. He's like, fuck. And like, he like, lost. He was like, Oh my God. And then he broke down, starts crying. And it's like, it's oh, gotta Lord. be the most Minnesotan oh, thing to go up there and call your shot. Be like, yeah, like I know how this story ends. I know I don't win. So like, thanks. <laughs> that rocks. Good. For, uh, fuck. Yeah, dude. That, that's that's how you take the power back. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Fun, fun fact. Wait, what is it? It's, um, <laughs> My I have a buddy from home who was on a couple of years ago. He was on what Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelorette. Well, it's a bunch of dudes competing. Competing. I don't know. Is that even fucking right? I don't know. But it was funny as shit. Like he, he made it like halfway through, maybe, but like the whole time I was because it was my buddy, I was like, I have to like, what is he doing? It was like him hanging out with the boys like half the fucking time. And then he, they're like all still good friends. And they'll just like go out drinking together. It's so fucking funny. Well, you know, like, oh. on that show are doing it for clout like, and just yeah, like, try and make a name for themselves. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, not going to win this. That's okay. Like, holy shit. Do you see these five beefcakes over here? Like, no, I'm not going to beat them. I'm just going to have a good yeah. time. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. That's the bachelor. Bachelor talk and bachelor, I guess, whatever, both. Um, so yeah, well, uh, we'll have to bring Sarah on next week to uh, get her thoughts on how the bachelor broke down. Mm. Also, I love this is for you, Z. There's a girl on there who was like queen psycho. Her name is Maria. She Hate is, this is for me. Hate that from, this is for me. She's from, well, no, she's the key is that she's from Canada, namely Toronto. And uh, I believe it was. I don't know if it was Rusk, but one of them was like very much a Maria supporter. And she made a video shouting back being like, I love the Boston Bruins. Like you guys are the best. And you know, how can we make it about Toronto? Per Mateo? They have to be fucking livid that a Toronto girl is like actively supporting the Boston Bruins. Like their city yeah. might melt. Yeah, no, we got to hype that what, up. Um, Ryan, we might fucking cross check her in the neck. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> oh shit. Um, any anything but, else exciting in uh, the NHL? <laughs> can't say, can't say. I can think of anything. Um, this is a uh -huh. Minnesota Wild slash prospect podcast, so let's mm -hmm. do let's do both of those things. Let's the do Minnesota the Wild. People are uh, getting very excited about ELCs being signed and everyone like doesn't really know what it means, which is reasonable since it's very different for like someone in Canadian, you know, major junior versus college versus Europe, uh, even to the point where like people in our group chat that we have on Twitter, like we're saying like uh, people don't understand, like once he signs, like he can still go back and play and we're like, no. No, he can't. It's college. Once he signs, he's not amateur anymore, so he's he's stuck. So we have Jack Peart. He is uh, the first name that we'll talk about. Z, 
I don't know. I, I think we're in the same boat here. I'll let you talk about it more, but God, I wish he could go back for one more year. <laughs> I don't think he's ready. Yeah. And by the way, I heard about 4% of that. I don't know if I'm frozen. Good. Uh, you're you're frozen now. as hell oh, on my oh. screen. Jack um, Pierce. Oh, no, this is a disaster. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, it's getting worse. This might this might be funny for everyone else, though. I'm gone. Oh, I'm back. And but he's still frozen. This is very funny. This is not getting any better. It's getting significant. Oh, you unfroze. You unfroze. Yeah, your right. internet is in shambles, just, dude. Basically, I, I said I wish. I wish this Pierre could go back. <laughs> Uh-oh. Isha's going to have a lot of editing to do. Is it bad? Nope, still not working. That's good. This is wonderful. I'm having... Pretty sure he's going to drop off any second here and then he'll rejoin. I'm going to drop out. There, I'm there just, it is. This yep. is insane. All right. He will be back. Um, so I'll, I'll expand on what I was saying there. Uh, Jack Peart, a guy that we were all excited about as Minnesotans, obviously being a Mr. Hockey guy, um, Minnesota through and through. He's a guy that the first two years he played, we were pretty impressed and we saw really good progression, especially when you think about St. Cloud historically, a team that is made up of older, more veteran guys. And he came in clean from high school. This season, he really didn't progress. It's not like he was bad, but he definitely didn't take a step forward like we had hoped. Z is back now. He can weigh in on this. I'm basically saying, Z, I don't think that Jack Peart, in a perfect world, should have been signing right now. Obviously, like you don't want to lose his rights, but we've talked a bunch about how his first two years, we loved what he did, given the realities of St. Cloud, how well he played, and we saw growth each year. This year, he kind of plateaued and didn't show us anything we haven't seen before. What do you think? Like, does he need to go to Iowa to take the next step or would it have been preferable to see him play one more college season and see if he can give us anything further? Um, yeah, I mean, it's weird. So like, like you said, first year, like the points were great. Like if people remember, because that's when I, we started this show, but, um, like there were things that you'd expect, like a true freshman, the mistakes that he was making, he was taking just the most, I was, it was driving me insane, actually the stick penalties. And now he would just re love to just do the off the, uh, the end board, go for the assist, like a bank shot. It was insane. It was driving me nuts, but you saw the flashes, why he got picked in the second round, why he projects to be, like a solid enough two way defense in the NHL. Like he does play that kind of projectable game. He's excellent in transition. Uh, but year two, he was a beast. Like he was yeah. incredible his sophomore season. This year, he did take, I would say, I don't know if I'd say a step back. He was given significantly more uh, responsibility, especially on the back end. St. Cloud, also very different team. Like sure. they were wildly inconsistent. I mean, there were games where they were kicking the shit out of, like, a couple top, like, 10 teams, and then they'd go and lose, like, fucking Augustana. The standard they, had a little run. They, they started bad, then cranked it up in the middle of the season, and then came right back down. It just, I don't know. It, it wasn't their year, uncharacteristic year for them, for sure. And they're going to have a weird team next year, too, with losing a couple guys, whether to transfer portal, graduation, or uh, signing. But it... Yeah, it just didn't feel like a year where you like go, yeah, he's ready now. Like this this is his like proclamation cuz he he told Joe Smith like, yeah, I felt like I was ready to take that next step and go pro. You got to say that. Like that's the cliché shit. I just don't agree with it. Mm. And I'm I'm hoping the I can thing, be proven wrong. Yeah, but like the thing with that though, like I still even if this year didn't go as well as everyone would have hoped, 
I don't, I still don't know if next year would have been any better. And I don't think that there's a whole lot more that college hockey is going to give him. Nothing says that he has to, you know, go to Iowa next season and then like immediately play after one year. Like I think for him, I do think that going and playing in the AHL actually will probably benefit him a little bit more because it's a, even it's not like he's going to go down there and log the same amount of minutes. Like he's going to just get used to the pro game and he has plenty of time. Um, I think again, like if you don't sign him this year, you really run the risk of losing him and you don't want to lose a second round pick like Jack Parrott because there is legit upside. Um, so you don't want to lose him for nothing or maybe like a fifth round pick. So I, I would say, yeah, if like, if the CBA was different and it was just go like, you're not going to have to sign him. Like if it was just, there's nothing, no like rules or whatever, but yeah, let him go play one more year, play out a senior year. But I just don't, Agreed. I still, Agreed. especially given like, I mean, at the end of the year too, I would say the last probably six or seven games for St. Cloud, um, the flashes of what he was doing last year and why the point totals were where they were. Like those did come back. Like he had one three point game. I can't remember if it wasn't against Denver. I can't remember who it was against, but he took over that game. I think he played like 28 minutes. So I think he's proven that he can play. And I just don't know if another year at St. Cloud, which they're going to have like a, it's probably going to be a pretty similar season. But I don't but know how much that really is going to benefit him. Try and like be anyway. the leader, the guy that pushes him over the hump. Like I, I agree. Like it's not like they're going to have a, a natty contending season, but there's still something he can show in comparison to the plateau year that we just saw, but I, I'm with you. Like you have to bring him in because of contractual situations, which I don't know, maybe with the CHL, everything they're working out with the, the NCAA to be eligible. Maybe that changes the whole NCAA rules with like, Oh yeah, you only get X amount of time to sign them. Like it, it's the biggest thing that sucks with like college hockey is, a lot of guys that get rushed out because of contracts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, in a perfect world, if there wasn't major, like, risk attached, I, yeah, another year of college hockey might be – I mean, he would play better there. I think, again, he has so many, like, foundational tools to his game. That's another thing with college hockey that's very weird. It's like – it is just one of those like college talks with those leagues where it's like any team could actually fucking win. It's just like, a, it, it's just different. I think he's now going to be able to go down there and I think he's going to be able to have like pro coaches play the pro game. And again, nothing says he has to do one year. He might need two, he might need three, like who knows. But um, I do think at this point, I just question, I guess, how much more development there really is to be had in college hockey for Jack Bird. So um Okay, so would you argue, like, on the flip side, maybe he should have left after last year? No, uh, that's the thing, too. No, I don't I don't think I would have said that either because I think he honestly needed – because, like, this year, again, I think he's playing probably three more minutes a night than he was last year. He's been so, like, he's playing 26, 27 every game. Um, and, again, the mistakes have been there, sure. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think in, in the long run, I do think, like, this probably – is about the right time. Like again, like with St. Cloud, if he was going to like, if it was a team that was going to be contending for a national championship, you might think a little bit differently. And he might too, to be honest with you. Um, but just given kind of where the team's at, how much like he's played a ton of fucking college hockey, like just with how many minutes he's been logging, especially this year. But um, yeah, no, I, I don't like, I don't think this will be like a detriment to him either. Like, I don't think going in and playing in Iowa, like, um, for like a season's gonna be gonna be like a big detriment. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm hopeful. Um but so yeah. to, to that point though, I think we have to talk about then what's gonna happen this summer, right? Because let me, let me just read you the eight names that currently sit on the blue line in Iowa. We've got Jack Peart, Will Butcher, Brendan Miller. Simon Johansson, David Spacek, Ryan O'Rourke, Damon Hunt, Carson Lambos. Like, 
there's a lot going on there and it is kind of nice in a weird way everyone expected that like damon hunt carson lambos like one of these guys might be up next year if we're talking like a year back but now that we've basically got the top six solidified for the wild if spurgeon is healthy which that's a big if right given that he had the double surgery on uh, two things you definitely don't want to have surgery on but you got him and middleton you got brody and faber and then you got what I think could be a really fun pair in Chisholm and Bogosian. These guys are not playing in the NHL next year, barring injury. So good that they have more time to develop since none of them have really hit the way that some fans would have hoped. But you also got to think the cupboard's getting pretty full in that age group. Who do you think is either most likely to move or who gets the best return? Like what do you foresee for this summer? Yeah. I mean, I think it'll be the guys that like have decently notable profiles among those guys. Like I'm sure they'll be like teams will call on guys like Damon hunt, Ryan O'Rourke. Like obviously Carson Lambos is not going fucking anywhere. I also don't really see why they would even move any of them anyways. Like spot checks played a lot of ECHL hockey this year too. Like they'll, they, and they already rotate enough down there as is. So I don't think it's anything that they're going to be overly concerned about. Like the one thing I do see them like having to navigate is just how many of those guys are still like super young. Even the guys that have been there for three years, some of them are like 23 years old. Um, and like, there were games this year that it was like, it was awesome and it was very fun. And then there were games where you're like, Oh fuck. Like they are a disaster at their own end. And like, there's one guy that's played NHL games. There's one guy older than like 24. So that's always going to be an interesting like conundrum for them to like play around with. But I mean, they are going to play in the NHL. Like I'm not Mm -hmm. saying he's ready to be thrust in and he needs to be there and play 82 games, but like, the kid belongs like he isn't an outcast when it comes to getting NHL minutes, but let's address uh, Nicholas Schuster here. Cause we've seen all ends of the spectrum fans that were beyond excited when he was drafted. Then we saw not being selected to team Canada for world juniors. Now he's kind of sitting in the murky in between and people aren't quite sure what to make of him. Like, what can you say to reassure fans that Carson Lambos is still a guy that we should be excited about? Not next year, but like in the years to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Carson Lambos, like, he's had plenty of games in Iowa where he looked phenomenal. And then there's games where he's clearly still getting used to pro hockey. He's been, and like, the thing with when he was playing in uh, the former uh, Winnipeg. Ice, former Kootenai Ice, uh, now Wenatchee Wild. Uh, that team was fucking loaded. Um, and they could pretty much do whatever they wanted every fucking game. So the thing with him is, like, he is a solid defender already. Like, he is a premier two-way defenseman. Over the last probably year or two, he's, he's been asked to play even more defense than he usually has been accustomed to probably, like, his whole fucking life. And so, like, there's just been so – there's been way fewer opportunities for him to, like, be first PP unit quarterback. Like, he, so he is kind of getting, like, trial by fire this year in the AHL where he's playing a whole lot of defensive minutes. But he's still – I mean, the last – he had one – I think he had, like, a t- – I checked a couple of weeks ago. He had, like, a 10-game – sequence where i think like the few like the lowest time on ice was like 27 and a half minutes and it's like he's literally on the ice every other shift so the thing with him is whether he does something good or bad it's making the highlight reel um so i think there's been a it's been a mixed back like you said too like there have been games where oh he is like again god damn it oh no am i gone yeah you're you're mush mouth that's great. Um, I'm just, yeah, there's one. All right. Um, I would say if you've watched Carson Lambeau since he got drafted this season, he was about what I would have expected, like his first full season in the AHL. Um, so, like, I mean, again, people want to freak out about, like, points or whatever. Number one, the Iowa Wilds are not a playoff team. They 
had a ton of young defensemen. He was asked to do a ton of heavy lifting, even more than he was used to. Um, so I would say, yeah, mixed bag this year. Like he's shown flashes of why he got drafted in the first round. He's shown flashes of why, like he was at one point, like a top 10 pick, but that fell off into like the mid to late twenties. So like, there's been flashes of both, which to be honest with you, I think is a good thing. So overall, I still am very high on Carson Lambos. Um, like he has tools that not many mm -hmm. defensemen have. Um, so the, the potential is still super high. So I would say it's about <clears throat> what you would have expected if you'd watched in the last couple of years. Um, Cause I mean, it's last year, the WHL too, like he still, they didn't like give him first power play unit minutes quite often. And he was like killing entire penalties, like heavily, heavily used defensively. And he was great. So, um, bit of a mixed bag, but like, again, about what you'd expect. And I still think, I still think he is very high on that uh, list of prospects for Minnesota. Yeah. I'm going to keep shamelessly plugging here too. Uh, cause I just have zero shame. Uh, Fellowship of the Rink, any of you that are watching live or listening to the podcast, yes, the episodes do populate on the SodaPod feed for the podcast. It also has its own podcast feed. So whatever device or app you listen on, please, please go subscribe, give five stars. I don't care what review you want to give. Say something ridiculous. Give us a hot take. Tell me I'm an idiot. Maybe I'll even read it on the show. But uh, go uh, give that some love to trying to grow the channel as best we can. And next week, we are hoping to have Carson Lambos as our guest. So there you go. Give five stars and give us a question. And as long as it's not something that'll get us fired, divorced, or canceled, we'll probably ask it. So five stars. Give us a good question for Carson. We'll give her. But uh, let's talk about the guy that everyone is very excited about now, Z, partially due to uh, your highlight reel that has gone viral. God bless R Russo and Joe Smith for sharing it several times now. Riley Height, he has signed his ELC, and he is a guy that we think has a shot of cracking the roster come this fall. What can you say that we haven't already? I mean, he's just like nonstop this whole WHL season. He's just absolutely shredding that league. Um, and I mean, dual threat offensively, like he could score goals himself. He's a top, top end playmaker. He's even got some defensive uh, prowess as well. Um, but he's fucking slippery, but he's unbelievably smart. Like, so I thought it was interesting when Russo was talking about like how he does have like legit real chance to crack like the opening opening night roster because again like these fucking contracts that they've signed over the last few years and some of the guys that are already here it's like all right wait well, if you stick them on the fourth line that's a mistake and a half like don't do that <laughs> uh, that's not worth it um but yeah i mean he so he i mean he had a solid draft year uh in the whl he almost hit 100 points then this year like he's just taken so many more steps forward just with the playmaking, with the goal scoring. Like he just gives you a little bit of everything. Um, and there isn't really like any main weaknesses. And like, he is a motherfucker on the ice too. That's the thing. He's not just like getting easy points. He's not just in soft areas of the ice. Like if you watch that video, a lot of his goals do end up coming from right around the net front. So um, he scores in a variety of ways. Oh, he, must, he, must, he must come from money. That, that sounds oh, like yeah, he yeah, yeah, money yeah, exactly. he's scoring right at the net front. Uh, yeah, exactly. So there you go. And I, he does give me some great Adam Beckman vibes. Just like when you see his celebrations, like he is lit up full electric. I, I don't know. I yeah. I'm excited to see his first goal with the wild and what he might do. Yeah, no, he'll pull something nice out. He is. He's one. That's the thing. He's there. He loves the big stage, too. Like, he loves big games. He's always going to show up for you. And again, like that Prince George team, they're kicking the fucking shit out of everybody. Um, but I mean, a lot of that just comes from him. He drives play, too. It's not like he's getting tons of points because he's just like tapping in rebounds or just like getting fed backdoor passes. He's legitimately driving play. So, um, yeah, the, the offensive ceiling is insanely high. We've said it a million times. It's insane that he was available to be picked where he got picked. Um, so we'll see what happens with, uh, you know, the roster next year. I mean, I I don't know how, but, like, they're going to have to do a little bit of work in the summer if they do want all of these guys playing in the NHL. So, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, the upside is just outrageous. He's so fun to watch, and what a fucking season he's having at the WHL. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was very. It's always exciting when they make when they sign those ELCs too. Um, and like you said before, it's, the reactions are always very funny. Mm -hmm. Well, and a perfect transition too to talking a little bit about the Frozen Four. His celebration that everyone goes to is like the first picture or gift they use. And the ear. He hasn't said it. I'm not going to make him say it, but that's for Phil Kessel. We all know it. The, the greatest moment. And I, I don't know, Z, have I even talked about that on here? Like, are you familiar with the Phil Kessel hand to the ear, Sally? I don't think so. You haven't. Go off. Go off. Do your thing. So on top of Phil Kessel just being an absolute physical specimen, like the, the reason that my wife is on board and loves Phil Kessel and has like adopted the penguins with me is it makes no sense that he does the things he does given his physical stature, right? And my love for him stems way before that, where he was one of the, like, obviously top players in the U.S., and he grew up in Madison, and he literally gave Wisconsin the middle finger and came to Minnesota to play high school ho or college hockey. And... He goes to Wisconsin and the fans were motherfucking him so hard, booing him like crazy. Phil Kessel scores a goal, goes right up to the student section. Bing. And that was that was the moment that I'm like, I will never love a player more. It's not possible. My, mm -hmm. my combined hatred of Wisconsin plus loving gopher hockey more than any NHL team and him just being we'll say a unique human to say the least it was cemented but uh, z confirm or deny flights have been booked you are heading to saint paul for the frozen four confirmed i the 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 time has been time off is approved flights are booked uh time it's off approved more than a week in advance yeah, oh yeah, buddy. That's uh, big. I came out to visit now, you and like I was like getting ready to get on my flight and you're like, God, I hope my PTO gets approved for tomorrow. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wild card, bitches. Um, but there you go. Um <laughs> now I just have to make the flight, you know? That's just always I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be an adventure. It's a nice early flight. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'll be there. Finally, stepping foot. Finally, boots on the ground in the state of hockey. And it's, it's going gonna to be, it's, I mean, we'll see if I make it home. Um, oh, it's going to, it's going to get irresponsible quickly. Um, so <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll, well see what happens. Either way, right? And uh, yeah. Jason Bryant, our boy who does uh, live in rank coverage, play-by-play uh, -play for St. Cloud. And uh, he's already been hitting me and Isha up. I agree with him. We need to get some kind of rendezvous set up. It's Maybe we'll do two. I think we need to do one for our awesome friends at Barrel Theory. Uh, get you some Shooter McGavin. And uh, I think you were more into the Power Rangers beer, if I remember correctly. But we also have to find the diviest, grungiest, smallest bar and see if we can just like load it with people. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, what the fuck is happening? Like this is this covers our like quarter, not not week, quarter. And any any bar that makes me feel like I am home at the last drop, I will be there. So I don't know if I can find the last drop for you, but we'll we'll get as close as we can. <laughs> uh, there's not going to be a Roscoe at any of these bars, though. Shout out Roscoe. The king returned the other day. I, I damn near pissed myself, and he just tackled me. It was the greatest moment of my life. I For those that don't know, Roscoe is an incredible dog. Black Lab, such a beauty. Last last summer, the like his owner was just letting me. He was like, ah, take the fucking leash, pal. Let's see if he wants to pick up some chicks. <laughs> I was like, all right, fucking give me that thing. And I just left the bar with him. It's like left and went for like a long walk. He's like, where the fuck did you take my dog? And I was like, I don't know. You get ice cream. I don't know. Do that fuck around. Um, it was great. Loved it. Love Roscoe. Yep. So 
Cosgrove, love what you're getting at here. NCAA should rotate St. Paul, Detroit, Boston, and Denver for Frozen Fours. Being that I went last year and, granted, had my heart ripped out in the worst fashion ever, Tampa is a fucking great spot for the Frozen Four. I I had a great time. I, I I'm only had in that. favor of that. And isn't it? I don't know if it's next year or the year after. It's in Vegas. Definitely down to test those waters. <laughs> That'll be fun. I've never. I've. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can send myself there. I have not, and I don't know if I should. I, I feel love like. It. Well, I mean, that would actually be a good way to go, though. So, yeah, yeah, you're, all right. you're going out. That's definitely how. Um, but, Z, we got to talk about it, man. Like, this is – everyone seems to think that, like, someone got the softest region. Someone got the hardest region. I don't really think there's an easy region in the Frozen Four this year. And, unfortunately, well, I guess – I don't know. Like, gun to your head, are you BU or BC? I'm a BC guy. Okay, so not as big of a conflict as I thought. We could have a Minnesota versus BU matchup to see who even goes to the Frozen Four, which is very unfortunate. Um, I mean, just from the top, obviously Boston represents the top two seeds in the tournament. What are your thoughts? Like, who are the teams you're watching? Who do you think is either a fraud or a team that no one's talking about that is primed to make waves? Um. Well, so I'm curious. I mean, it's not really like a hot take here, considering they've been filthy all year long. But given the fact that uh, one of my favorites in this prospect pool has had a phenomenal year, Denver, they're number three. Obvious, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like right. they do, they do get so much love. Obviously, it's not like they're no did one's talking about. Did you about see them. the Steve Boyum goal? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. They've got Z Booyam, one of my favorites in this draft class. Regal Lorenz is continuing an unbelievable yeah. bounce back year, and he is on an absolute heater right now. Uh, I think a little behind got, the like, scenes one for you, Z. <laughs> he just said, like, fuck, I had to spend some time going back to edit my recording from this past Monday because he said uh, Lorenz was a defenseman. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, same that's thing. Fun. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Sure, why like, not? He's he's Z he's Boyum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the team that I could see disappointing a little bit, to be honest with you, because I've seen games where they're phenomenal. I've seen games where not that impressed. Michigan State, like, and Western Michigan sucks to play against. Like, Western Michigan has beat pretty much every top team at least once this year outside of, like, the two Boston teams. But they've been a thorn in a lot of team sides. And I think that is a very shitty round one matchup for Michigan State. And again, I've seen Michigan State be phenomenal. I've seen Lev Shunoff go off. I've seen them just not show up so many times. Um, and I mean, you could say the same thing about the team, whoever wins that. The next matchup, like Nodak and Michigan, uh, will be ask. fascinated to see. Hang on, hang on. Scenario. Marshall Warren. Do we count him as like a fucking prospect still? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, Western Michigan beats Michigan State. Michigan beats North Dakota. Does another game happen? Or does yeah. Western Michigan just advance to the Frozen Four? Give me, give me fucking Western Michigan, baby. I, they just have to. Michigan won't play them. It's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, they refuse. They won't. They won't do it. What, that, what, what? I, honestly, like ob objectively, I think if we have to pick the hardest region, it's either that one or Denver's. Like Denver yeah. having to play the Maine. winner of Maine or Cornell is not fun. Yeah, that was what I was gonna say too. Both Cornell and Maine, like this year. Dude, I want to pick Maine to like be my like team that Dark, I can yeah, buy. Yeah, yeah. But dude, Cornell is a shit fucking sandwich for a first round matchup. Just like I do not like Minnesota getting Omaha. It yeah. just it's just not Omaha a good weird. Matchup. And yeah. that's more of a home game for Omaha than it is for Minnesota, weirdly. Yeah, and I kind of I kind of just look at, like it's crazy that people are like, oh, they got a soft first round. I'm like, I don't know if I really see that anywhere. <laughs> like I fucking I mean you... I can understand saying like RITBU. I can understand 
Michigan Tech, Boston College. The rest of them, I think, are all going to be great games. Oh, yeah. I guess I was just going by the region. Like, like Wisconsin Quinnipiac, that sucks. That, that sucks. Honestly, BC does not want to play those two teams. Like it's that, not, it's that's not an a great... unfortunate second round draw. You're basically yeah. taking a bunch of kids and going up against all the adults. No yeah. matter who comes yeah. out of that matchup. Yeah, it, yeah, it would be it's be insane. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I oh God, I think these games are going to be unfucking believable. It's but, be so um, I will specifically have my eyes on Michigan State, Western Michigan, because I do think Western Michigan's a bit of a problem. Now that I said that, though, they will fucking Michigan State will roll like eight nothing, of course, because that's how just every one of my predictions the last like three years have gone. I don't even know how we still have a fucking podcast anymore. Um, but yeah. But, but shout out Regler Reds though. What a sicko. What a season. And yeah. what a ridiculous fucking heater he's on right now. He is lighting it up. It's crazy too, because he's like eighth in team scoring. <laughs> like it is. They just fucking I mean, hammer every Denver over you possibly can. Yeah. I don't think I think they may have had like three games hit the under. It's unbelievable. Yeah, do also, we have any more hit, for UMass? <laughs> Well, saying hit the under just sounds wrong. Just fails to hit the over. I guess that's yeah. Sounds no, wrong. you don't. You don't hit the, hit the under. <laughs> yeah, the, you like, don't short don't the me. over for sure. Um, yeah, if yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we gotta address this though. How how necessary after this year's developments is it to have the high seed host the regional in perpetuity when you've got uh, again fuck North Dakota. I hate them in the most respectful way. Like their fans are awesome. I hate everything about their program and their team because that's what I'm required to do being in Minnesota. Plus you know, I, I don't really support Nazis. So sorry, Ralph Engelstad, your arena's sick, but I will not hail Hitler. Um, but it's good take. having, having a bunch of Michigan teams that have good followings like Michigan and Michigan state having North Dakota that probably has the best traveling fan base out there and putting them in a 2,500 person arena is the dumbest shit. The NCAA has ever done. And the NCAA has done a lot of stupid shit. It's right up there with Reggie Bush getting his Heisman revoked. Mm, I forgot that that was a thing. Um, I was because well, nowadays that, he would have been commended for the money he got paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like way to pave the way to pave the way for the rest. What? Of why is Ms. Why is that a host city in general? And why are they putting quite possibly the highest attendance region there? It's insane. Yeah, you know how like there's, especially after the the recent like, well, I guess somewhat recent a couple weeks ago after the Tortorella suspension and fifty fucking sheet fine people have always been hammering like the refs need to be available for questions after games i kind of feel like whoever is the fucking schedule guy for the frozen four we need him at the podium answering questions because and insane I, I like what are we who was like yeah I have, I know, I know where we should go. And what fucking board meeting was like, yeah, we all agree. Yeah. I want every, every person at the podium answering questions. Be like, yeah, I don't know. It's just was like, grow the game. Yeah. Okay. That'll, that'll work. That'll do it. I, I wonder how much it has to do with the fact that St. Louis hosts next year's Frozen Four, which uh, Cosgrove chimed in, by the way. 2025 is St. Louis. 2026 is when Z and I both die in Vegas. Yeah. Well, yeah. If they want to use that as a rationale, that's legitimately insane. It's like this is it what's going to get people fired up for um, a year from now. Oh, by the way, the people in St. Louis have never heard of hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they don't already like hockey. Half, half of them don't <laughs> even know what a Jimmy Snuggerud is. Yeah, they have the, yeah, good diet. <laughs> Oh, I'm still sad. Oh, they're gonna torch there for a decade. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be brutal. brutal. Like, I'm gonna, gonna have to it. cheer for that line. I'm gonna cheer against St. Louis. I want them to lose like five four every game, but I want either Rick or Jimmy to put up a hat trick. Yeah, of course, obviously. playing together for mm -hmm. sure. Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. So 
couple picks there. Like, do you have like who who do you see being in the Frozen Four when we attend, or at least give me like a couple names or even uh, who your like pick is to win. Like, however you want to take this. I think because I just can't get myself to go with a one seed every year. I will go with Denver to take it home. All they, all those fuckers do is put up goals. Um, and again, love the Rens. Fucking love Zeev Booyam, who's like well over a point per game as a young freshman. That's always sick. Um, so I'm going to pick them. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure now they'll lose in the first round. Um, Come after me. I mean, I got to go both Boston teams, Denver, and then fuck. I don't even want to pick any of fucking Michigan State, Western Michigan, North Dakota. I'll just say Western Michigan because I already just decided that you, they were going to be. No, it'll be North Dakota. You know that. Yeah. And it's a yeah, full it's slate of Michigan except for one team. Remember when it was all Minnesota teams yeah. in the Frozen Four? And of course, none of them won. Like that, that's what's going to happen here. It's going to be North Dakota plus, I don't know. I, if they win the natty, I'm going to be like very, very not okay. But the off chance of Minnesota and North Dakota playing each other for the national championship, that is like, that will be the highest War. rush I ever have in my life. Like, it's literally the best <laughs> night of my life or the worst fucking night of my life. There, there is no in between. Like, losing to Quinnipiac, especially the way they did, fucking sucked. But in Minnesota, the Gophers losing to North Dakota, I, dude, that would fucking hurt. But that's, that game, I'm going to be so goddamn wired. I, it, I need it. I need it. I'm also changing my pick. I'm not going both Boston teams. I am taking Ooh. Minnesota over BU. There you go. I'm going to do that. Oh. Um, Why? I'll be honest, like growing up for whatever reason, so I was Brady always shatters his jaw against RIT uh, or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, I always was BC over BU, and I like can't get myself to not hate BU, so I do hate them. Um, so the fact that I That's any credentials. Even, the fact, yeah, fuck that. They're the one place that was like, no, you can't get credentialed for the game that 45 minutes away from a game against BC. They're playing Northeastern tomorrow. Do you want to go to that one? I was like, <laughs> no. So, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess so. But yeah, Minnesota, Western Michigan, Denver, BC. Be a very funny group of teams i think um i'm all for that yeah, yeah. sign me up shit i okay i think we more or less did it with uh nhl and college anything else you wanted to hit on here before we jump into this week's group of 2024 draft eligibles i don't think so i think we can uh and turn the page here and talk. Oh right. man, scouting home oh, turf. <laughs> All right, this this is a big one for you, Z. So we have the Swedes. We got to pause though, real quick, for everyone that isn't like a full on hockey nerd like you. Talk through. There's going to be three different leagues that come up for all these players. I know Russia is very confusing for everyone. I, I imagine Sweden's even more confusing. Talk about the SHL versus Hockey Elsvenskin versus J20. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it's similar to, actually, I guess it's kind of like the same exact situation as Russia. You've got the SHL, which is their NHL, the first pro division. Hockey Elsvenskin, which is like not necessarily, it's not, an AHL team because they're not affiliated with anyone else. It's just like division two. Like that's where Liam Ogren was playing. Cause uh, Jew Garden got demoted a couple years ago, relegated a couple years ago, lost in the final last year. So they're still um, in the all skin. I think they're actually in the semis now. Um, and then J20 is just U20. They've also got the J18 U8. So that's, that's pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. So um, you'll see a lot of like a lot of these top prospects that get drafted 
early out of Sweden, people get very confused because it's like they've been playing in the SHL all year. And it's like their stat line is like 28 games, zero goals, two assists. And they're getting drafted like 11th overall. And you're like, what the fuck? (laughs) What do you mean? It's like, okay, his number one skill is offense. He's a goal scorer. Um, But yeah, no, usually they play go back and forth as well. So you'll see a lot of a couple of these guys. They've played Osvenskin games. They've played J20 games. (laughs) I didn't, I, I thought about, there are a couple guys that have played like 15 J18 games. I was like, all right, I'm not doing all three. That would be like outrageous. It'd be pretty funny to put those in the stats, but, um, but yeah, so they're, they're usually going back and forth. Um, and then a couple guys that just end up sticking um, in like the SHL. So I threw those in there too. And they can bounce back and forth between the J20 and the Allspenskin as well, obviously. All right. Fair enough. Let's just give her then. First up, not a sweet. This one's going to take a while. Um, no, you've be... talked about him for quite some time, and I mean, definitely getting all name team consideration. We have Michael Bra- Bronseg Nigord. Did I get that? Yes, nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ah, so. That's the other thing. This is the Swedish region. Not all of them are going to be from Sweden. And by far, the number one prospect coming out of Sweden this year is from Norway. And he is going, he's easily the best ever Norwegian prospect we've ever seen hit the, like the NHL draft. Um, ever, he ever. is not, not in terms of like the draft, not in terms of the draft pedigree. This is by, like, there hasn't been anyone close to Bronsek Nigord. He is already like, I mean, in terms of this draft class, he is absolutely one of the most well-rounded um, players where he probably isn't even that far from being able to fit into NHL games. He's got good size. He's a decent enough skater. He doesn't have, like, top, top-end speed, but he's incredibly mobile, like, just in terms of, like, lateral uh, mobility, agility. Um, he's great in transition. Um, and his shot is an absolute joke. Like, it is he like slap shot people saw that too because he did play for norway in the world juniors this year norway obviously they were like it felt like every game they were like a thorn in everyone's side until the third period and then there was just like the floodgates would open they would just kind of hold their own but he played well i thought um but again one of the most well-rounded players he's a two-way forward again not far away from like being nhl ready to be honest with you um and before the world juniors like I've never seen a hockey player have worse puck luck in his life. Like, I think he may have had four points in his first 20 something games in the Allsvenskan this year for Mora IK, who is one of the better teams um, in the Allsvenskan. After World Juniors, I think he had points in like eight of his next 10. He's scoring goals, he's play- making plays, getting assists. Um, he kills penalties. Like, he can literally do just about everything. The one question that people are going to have is how much more development is there for him? Like, is this close to what he's going to be at the finished product? I think that's not necessarily the case, but like, that's where the, like, if you want to call it criticism, I guess comes in. Um, And if you want to question like the actual full on NHL upside, he absolutely looks like a guy that can be a like 60, 70 point two way winger. He'll again, he'll kill penalties. He's got a phenomenal shot. Like he could score. Again, just gives you a little bit of everything. So he is my favorite player in this draft class. I think anyone that gets him wherever he's going to fall, which I put the tier 12 to 20, just because some of the guys in front of him have like insane ceilings. And while his is quite high, I don't think he's necessarily going to look like Nikita Kucherov out there, like putting up 130 points every year. Um, But again, already close to being like somewhat NHL ready. One of the most well-rounded players in this draft class um and he's having a great playoff too so far for 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 mora ik he's got three goals and an assist in their six games um including um an ot game winner so love bronseg nigord my favorite player in the class i would cry if minnesota ended up taking him after getting robbed of fisker Bolgard last year i think he went one pick before kubalainen one one pick one fucking pick um but yeah i i think the world of this player like he is fucking unbelievable so we'll see we'll see what happens but i think the 12 to 20 is probably fairly a realistic um range for him to go um and that's where i put 
his tier. There is range, I guess. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we're going to have a lot of all name team guys in uh, this sector because this next one here is one of my personal favorites, and I know you like it too. What a pick. Alphonse Frige. And I got to say a couple things on this one. First, you'll notice uh, as part of the iconography, anyone that's listening on podcast, you need to come check out on uh, the Soda Pod YouTube channel. I learned that the Swedes have a lot of pictures on Google images of these kids when they're like 10 years old playing hockey. So whenever there was one that popped up in like the top five images for results, that gets thrown on. And it's uh, funny to just see the two side by side. Also, I've never seen, uh, granted, um, it's not like it's like some crazy phenomenon, but what do you call a plus minus of zero? Is it just the the absence of a plus minus because he's not plus or minus he is he's just vibing he's just vibes dude he's He's, just out there i think i was literally like just machine going through the stats like not looking and then i was like laughing i was like i went zero that's pretty funny i think there might be a couple i put like zero plus minus and this one i put plus minus of zero um but alphonse you said freeze i don't even know if it's freeze fry couldn't tell you um that's fun Six foot one, right around 200 pound left shot demon. I think this is so. And just to backtrack a little bit, this is the weakest draft class coming out of Sweden we've seen in a very long time. Where for the for a while there, there was other than Bronsag Nigor, it was a pretty like common belief that like there's not going to be any Swedes taken in the first round outside of Bronsag Nigor, who is Norwegian. Um, but the way that he's come onto the scene this year, he's one of the best skating D men in this class. His transition game is incredible. He's got, he's flashed way more offensive upside than he has in the past couple of years too. Um, and defensively he's solid. He kind of, again, like just doesn't really have a whole lot of weaknesses and just the growth that he's shown this year in terms of the actual transition game, how smart he is. He kind of just gives off like a guy that's going to play a very long time in the NHL, you might never hear of him, but if he's on your team, he's going to be like your guy. Um, I he's still not, think not a direct he's flash. Comparable, right? But kind of your Jonas Brodin type. Uh, yeah. So again, like still pretty different because like Brodin's defensive game is just on a whole other level. And there's probably only a handful of players who do skate like Jonas Brodin, especially fucking backwards. It's insane. Um, but that, that'd be a whole other, we could do another podcast on Jonas Brodin's, uh, Backward skating. Um, but Alphonse Frage, I I for me, he I think in December, January, I was trying to like stop myself from putting him in the first round. But then again, just the progression this year in terms of his like he's flashing playmaking ability, he's got a great shot. And the thing with him is you can not win the puck from him on the four check. He beats you every single time, and he's one of the best transition defenders in this in this um, class, especially out of Sweden. So I am very high on him. I think he's got like serious, like top sleeper potential. I think he'll probably go late twenties. He might not even go in the first round, Um, but I'm very high on him. I don't, again, he's not going to be like power play one quarterback. He's not going to give you like over half a point per game, but defensively he's solid. His mobility is ridiculous. He's going to make everyone's lives easier on the ice, just in his ability to like retrieve pucks, start transition play. Um, and there is enough offensive potential. I think he can put up some points. I know it's just not going to be like, that's our guy running the power play. So I like him a ton. Um, and he's another guy that like this class in general in out of Sweden has picked up as the years gone on, which made, made sense, especially at the beginning of the year. Cause like some of these guys are just like, there's just so many, uh, tools that they have that's just like they haven't put them all together yet but he's one guy that's like skyrocketed in the in the rankings and he's in a lot of first rounds now so curious to see where he goes but um yeah no i love i love alphonse fry free or whatever you want to fucking say it um he's great i mean he is seven feet tall so that helps there you go number three lucas petterson which i don't know the way isha always pronounces elias petterson is Pietrushun. 
So I, I don't know how it's actually pronounced here, but we'll go with it. Yeah, Jesus. I think it's Luke Pedersen. So uh, Lucas Pedersen, another guy I would say probably has a chance to go tail end of the first. Um, he's great. It's just, I think for a long time, and he actually, NHL Central Scouting, they did give him an A grade preseason. Um, but like the play, the skill, the playmaking is insane. He flies on the ice. Um, very smart player, plays a great two way game. Um, the question is how much the offense from the J20 in Sweden is going to translate to the NHL level. I think it'll take him a little bit to get there, but with the amount of skill he has, he's a very smart player. And the fact that he is a solid two way centerman, um, and I do think he is a centerman in the NHL, um, I think gives him first round potential. I wouldn't be, again, I wouldn't be shocked if he went early, early second. Um, but just given like he's taking over like Moto, their J20 team, not great this year, but he is legitimately taking over games. So the fact that he's well over a point per game um, on that team is very imp impressive. He's a plus 27, um, and he plays a fucking hard game too. So um, great two way centerman. The upside is there. It's just whether or not you really believe in it. Um, if you don't, then you'll probably take him early second. Um, if you buy in on the skill and the upside and like the, the skating ability, um, then you can, you can feel good about taking him late first round. But, um, yeah, no, like him a lot. Again, the fact that we ended up with like three or four out of Sweden that like I would put in the first round, that kind of like speaks to this class in general where it's like, yeah, they've got, there's potential there, but, um, you know, it, not, we'll not see, what we've like, seen in the past. Believes in it. Yeah. Right. It's, I mean, there's no one that's outside of Bronze like Nigord who like, has any shot of like top 10. Do you think he has a shot at top 10? Bronsek Nigor, pro, it's like, it would be like, oh, like it wouldn't be like a, wow, that's a massive reach. It would be like, oh, like a bit, probably somewhat of a reach, but like, yeah, I mean, he could play soon. So, um, and again, if you really believe in that upside, you take him. Fair. And we got to address this one for Mateo quick. We can hide this. Which was worse? Fisker Molgard for Z or Benson for Hoppy? I think Benson killed you. I, I think that was dark. That crushed my soul. That that hurt, me, that hurt me more than every Minnesota Wild fan who somehow was hurt that the Chicago Blackhawks <laughs> all over more. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Literally. It's fucking <laughs> so good. It was I so can't good. believe they didn't take him. What like how? How I, did like, the Wild not take him? What? How do you not hold him at gunpoint and make him not pick him? <clears throat> it's it's too good. It's yeah. too good. Yeah. Um. All right. We are up to number four. Is it Noel Franzen? Noel Franzen. Noel Franzen. He is a whole lot of fun. All year, he was top three in scoring amongst D men in the J 20. Um, and he did end up getting a couple SHL games. He scored, I believe in his first SHL shift. Um, he's got an absolute bomb of a shot on him. He's an incredible skater. The defense is hit or miss. It's definitely still a work in progress, but in terms of his like transition defending because of how good of a skater he is, um, he makes himself quite useful, but there have been like, I think, I tweeted out a video of this OT winner he scored. It was, he picked, I mean, this is a guy who picks up the puck, but behind the opposition net skates out of the offensive zone, regroups, and then just takes it to the house himself, just dicing everybody. He's got insane skill. Again, like the offensive potential is through the roof. It's just, is the defense going to be like steady enough to give him a meaningful, like, shot at like playing good minutes. Um, but like there is serious upside with no friends. If he does put it all together, another guy that was like not an unknown, but based on how dominant he's been for Faryastad, like it's just undeniable at no point. Did he have any kind of slowdown? I mean, he put up 20 goals in 45 games as a defenseman um, to go along with 24 assists in the J 20 this year. He played well in the playoffs as well. Um, so he's definitely one to watch. I've seen people who have like convinced themselves to put him like late, like 30, 31, 32 because of the upside. But 
I would probably take a little bit more of a measured approach. I put his tier 40 to 50 because that feels about right. Um, but I do think you're going to get a solid, solid demon with like so with the, with real good offensive potential if he can, you know, put together enough of a two way game. So I love Noel Franz and he is very fun to watch. Um, his highlight reel is comical. Like, I mean, the goals he's like, he does not score a bad goal. Like, it's just like whether it's just an absolute rocket launcher or he just like picks the puck up himself, dances everybody at the blue line, um, and then takes to the house like Yossi did last night against Vegas in overtime. Um, he's fun. He, I, I really, really, really like Dole Franzen. So he just got in over the next guy um, because of like the ridiculous upside. So love him. I He's one to watch for sure coming out of Sweden. Care to comment on uh, Mateo's statement? Farius yeah, Scott, unbelievable. That, the SHL team, Farius died. Like first round by second round four game sweep against Rogla. They were up, I believe one, nothing with three minutes left in the third period today too. And then ended up losing. So um, that's why Liam Ogren, we'll see if he uh, makes his way on over to uh, Iowa soon. Uh, Cause that's what it sounds like. I did not see that coming, but we'll see. Wow. Well, all right. Then moving on number five, one that I wouldn't say is necessarily all name team worthy. But it's just a name that I think it's is nice. fun. And Simon, is it Simon or Simone Zether? Zether? What, what's the pronunciation here? I got to think it would be Simone Zether. Simone but Zether, we think. I'm sure it's wrong. Um, and look this at this. Is... I've, I've got the evolution of Simone Zether, by the way. We've got like three yeah. different ages of him at the bottom. Um, and his strangely like large arm just based on like it's kind of like when you hold a fish out when you catch it that you like overextend it's like look how big this fish that is looks and yeah. it is big yeah yeah um so this is a guy that i am very surprised hasn't gotten more like love all year long so you know last year is a draft minus one in the j20 um let's see 38 points in 37 games he's a six foot three 190 pounds center that plays a phenomenal two way game. He scores goals. He skates well. Like he makes plays. He is a four checking demon. Like he, again, like another guy that just checks every single box. And he's been producing since he stepped onto the ice um, in the J20. And this year, like gets called up to the SHL and never steps foot in the J20 again. He played like fourth line center for them. You have four assists in those 42 games. Even if he's probably by the other season he's probably averaging right around 13 14 minutes which is very impressive if you stick around and you're not like a big point producer in the shl because like yeah the guys that go the very very early usually they're like skilled wingers who score goals and they finish the year with like one or two assists playing for two minutes maybe but they fluctuate back and forth from the j20 and the shl he just he was their fourth line center for 42 games playing again 12 14 minutes a night. Um, and again, like there's, there's enough skill there that I believe that there is a solid middle six scoring center that plays a really nice two way game. I, again, I, I don't know why he really hasn't got as much love as, as I think he should have. Um, I don't know if I like let other people convince me to put him like 40 to 45 to 55. Cause if, if I'm being honest, like he's in the same, he should be like, I gave Franz in 40 to 50. Um, I understand why people question the upside. I still think there's enough there just based on what he did as a draft minus one last year, the J 20 on a Rogla team that won the J 20 last year, like was there, one of their best players and defensively they, and offensively. And, and he's a big motherfucker. Fraud is fraud, right? Far yep, there fraud. you go. Far there you fraud. go. Print the shirt. Yeah. Um, so I like him a lot. I again, you know, like another guy I think has sleeper potential just because I could see him going later than I would have personally taken him. Like I could see him going mid to late second round. Um, and I think even though I put my tier 45 to 55, I wish I put it 40 to 50. Um, but I like him a lot. I think there's a, a whole lot to work with if you're an S or if you're an NHL team. Um, and a kid like Siemens out there, and he's got incredible experience this year on a really good Rogue team who's going to the semis. Uh, for the SHL. Yeah, if, if only you had control over the tiers that you assigned. That's yeah, if only I could choose tough. over anything. If I had any choice in my life at all, you know. Tough break. 
It's always next year. There it is. Going on to six, then. We've got another one that I think is like right on the fringe of all name team, but it's this one's less that it's a great name than it is like just fun to say. If yeah. I were God, I can't even. Uh, I was gonna say if I were Lapanta, but I can't fathom that. I also can't fathom being Ryan Carter because my hair will never be that good. If I were yeah. someone in between Ryan Carter and Anthony Lapanta on the the scale of uh, you know play by play broadcast. But Dinka would be my favorite name to say. That's just a fu- it's fun to say. It's it's like Francisco. That's a fun word to say. Francisco. Francisco. <laughs> um, yeah, another guy that came onto the scene basically out of nowhere. This is a six foot three. I couldn't believe that he was listed at 183 for his weight. I think he's gotta be closer to two. Um, and he is a fucking animal, but he is a phenomenal skater. He's got good hands. Um, you know, great, terms hair. Like the, uh, great haircut, nice mullet going, um, or at least great lettuce. Um, but the offensive IQ, like sometimes he'll, the decision-making is a big question. Um, but another guy that as a right shot D man worked his way from the J 20 into the SHL for Malmo this year. And by the end of the season, he was firmly in their second pair playing 15, 60 minutes a night. I think he's another guy that scored in his first or second game in the SHL this year. Um, but in terms of just like potential, there's a ton. And he is a, again, just a beast, like not fun to play against. He's incredibly physical. He defends well. Um, and he's a big right shot D man. So I think he'll probably go higher than like Zether and maybe even Franzen just because of like the way that he plays and the fact that he's six, three, probably closer to 200 pounds, but um, definitely came on. So a draft eligible. What does he have a brother that's draft eligible too? Yeah. His brother's a center. He's also a fuck. He's a twin uh, massive. I think he's six, four uh, center also for Malmo, didn't, not the same even, level, but uh, didn't even uh, crack the top 10. Oh yeah. Couldn't. Um, but I think, but Dick has gotten in this is there's, strong consensus there is legit upside with him just given how well he skates at his size how well he defends um and like he flashes if he can hone in just like the decision making offensively there's like decent point potential as well again not gonna like quarterback your first power play unit um but like the fact that he's already playing almost 14 15 60 minutes a night in the shl as a 17 year old um it's very impressive so I think he'll go early second. Um, I put the tier 45 to 55 just because the hockey IQ is going to have to like improve a little bit, but like right on the same tier as my like guys like Zether and, and Franz. And I wouldn't be shocked if he went first, just given like the profile. Is he a guy you want to see the wild target just being that they are loaded up on the left side of their blue line? Yeah, he would be a decent target. I think like, you look like you said, like so many of those guys in the back end that are like legit prospect for them do play on the left side. So it'd be nice to mix in a right shot. And like, again, not a guy you're going to be rushing, but the fact that he's already getting this SHL experience is phenomenal. Um, and he kind of fits the mold of player that they like to take. So yeah, no, that should be a nice addition for sure. Um, but again, like I just love the like the fact that he's playing 30, like, like that he made the SHL and then just didn't go back down to the J20. And by the end of the year was on their second pair playing big minutes and like decent responsibilities. Like it's very impressive. So um, definitely one to watch. There's people that are trying to like, I've seen people put them in their first round too. So really? Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Not for me, but you know, he's around there. <laughs> not, not for me, but for others. Yeah. Fuck him. But like, you know, uh, maybe. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> all right number seven has to be one of Easy my front on runners for all name team um almost as good as last year's three namer which i guess do we have a a disagreement on who last year's three namer was i my two sons of last year felix yeah, Ungersor, the greatest hockey player of all time which one's better name name not player Oscar Fisker Bolgard's kind of just like outrageous. It's like, I've got to give him that name. 
Um, anyway, Saline Wallenius. What an awesome name. He's legit. I really have battled with myself where I would put him and where I'd feel comfortable taking him. Like, there are plenty of people who have him like late first round. I feel like the consensus is right around 50. Um, six foot. 180 pounds or so, or so is 176. I just usually round up. It's just easy. Um, but the offensive upsides there, like crazy skill. Another guy, real solid transition defensively work in progress, but like manageable. I do question the offensive upside because he can skate himself into trouble. Like sometimes, but I love the fact that he does try things using, like he knows what tools he has. So I like that he at least experiments. The decision making again can be like questionable at times. People and he also plays on the same team as Alphonse Fry, so they're both on Vecchio. Um, and like you can see, like his numbers offensively look better than a guy like Fry because that's Fry how you pronounce that defense. shit, Vecchio. Yeah, isn't that crazy? E A X J O is Vecchio. Yeah. I've it. seen, I've heard that both the com like the commentators in Sweden they've said that, and I've heard, just heard Vecchio. Jesus, this is like this is yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. See how yeah. Isha feels reading most things. This is ridiculous. And uh, yeah. yeah, Mateo called it out, by the way. I was waiting for this, and I wasn't going to drag you, but since he brings it up, Axel Sandin Pelica is far and away the best renamer of last year. I won't Yeah, I've it. tried to block that one from my memory, too, because I hated that he went to Detroit. So That, one that really does me. also suck. That is a big bummer. Yeah, God, that one sucks. Him, him and Moritz Sider. Ooh. Okay, move on. Yeah, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Um, but Sully Willanius, again, very curious to see where he goes, just given the fact that he does have these like again, insane skill, phenomenal skater, transporting pucks, he's great. Um, it's just gonna he's gonna have to hone in the decision making. Um, there's times where yeah, he might make like a very questionable play, but you know, given the upside and like the talent that he does have. And the fact that he's he knows like what his tools are, like what his strengths are, he's willing to experiment with those tools. I think gives him a decent enough shot to like be probably a second pair guy who puts up decent enough offensive numbers. Again, I put Fry over him because I see maybe not the same level of offense, but offensive potential. But his deep defensive game is just on another level versus Charlie Willanius. Um, so I think like he could be so like last year I was losing my mind when um oh my god the defenseman the fucking blues took at the end of the year or end of the year end of the first round of course now I can't even fucking oh damn I know who you're talking about too and now I'm spaced <laughs> Theo Lindstein Theo Lindstein so I think he'll play a long time again just a really smooth skater like... I lied I had no idea who Theo Lindstein does not yeah. ring a bell for me at all so I I was way off track <laughs> yeah. A guy I'm more comfortable taking late second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he gives me those kind of like similar vibes where it's like, yeah, there's plenty of upside there just in terms of the skill, the skating ability, and like just the, the foundational tools. But like the thing with selling with Laney is he's got different upside than a guy like Lindstein just because he's willing to experiment with them. Like Lindstein just doesn't like to, he just likes to play a very safe game. Um, and that kind of is what I the opposite of like the selling Laney is experimenting with his own tools so we'll see um wouldn't be shocked if he went 50 to 60 wouldn't be shocked if a team talked themselves into taking him late first would still surprise me but early second early early second um because yeah there's there's upside there yes yeah. <laughs> fuck off cost girl vecchio 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 Lakers originally located in Minneapolis. Yeah, the Minnesota Vecchio. Oh, that kind of that's kind of nice, dude. Well, you don't know what he's saying, do you? I saw Lakers. Yeah, it's L.A. Lakers who were in. Yes. All right, we're we're moving past it. Um, number eight in the top ten for Sweden. We have a first off animal. We we have to talk about not only I mean look at the the uh, the part game but Oscar is it Volette or Volette. 
That's a fun one to say. This has to be my favorite Swedish team based on Jersey alone. These jerseys Mm -hmm. are on fucking real. I am ASP. That's it. They are the best. They are so good. So good. Yep. Oscar Bullet, winger out of Sheleftia AIK, which is where uh, ASP plays and lit up the SHL this year, by the way. Um, the only thing that is going to take, uh, that's going to hold Oscar Bullet back, Wale, I don't know, uh, from going as a first round pick because the offensive upside is insane. Um, is the fact that like 5'11 seemed unbelievably generous. Like, when you see him on the ice, like, yeah, he's 5'7", like, easy. Like, actually, maybe not. I don't know. Um, he's very small, but he is also, like, an asshole to play against. So, I, like, for me, in terms of just, like, raw talent and upside and, like, offensive potential, he's got first-round, like, upside. I mean, 41 games, 29 goals, 32 assists with 61 points, plus 22. And he's also leading the J20 playoffs in points. He has five goals and five assists in three games uh, for Shalethia. Um Dynamic in transition. He can make plays, but his shot, the amount of power he can generate off like one foot, like back foot off balance, the power and precision that he puts on that puck is unbelievable. He lit up the J20 last year as a draft minus one. He is an older player for this draft. He's like a uh, 05, a late 05. So just missed it on last year's draft by like maybe a two months, maybe. I can't remember his actual birthday. But um, in terms of offensive upside, through the roof. He is small. The skating is, despite the fact that he is very good in transition because of how deceptive he is and how much skill he has um, and how smart he is, like it doesn't really limit his play in the J20, obviously, considering he's top five in points in regular season, and he's leading the J20 in playoff points. Um, but it's just the size, the like lack of like actual separation, like foot speed, um, that's going to like hold him back. But in terms of raw upside and like skill, and again, the shot is just a joke. Um, like it is unbelievably fun to watch Sheleftia on the power play because they always have five absolute studs on the ice, but he runs the show from the wing. Um, and again, he can make plays. He's got a ridiculous shot. Um, and the fact that he is such a prick to play against, like he makes himself useful in the defensive end. Um, but again, I think there's the size and like the lack of foot speed might hurt him just in terms of where he gets taken. Um, but like, in terms of, again, skill and like upside, he's got first round written all over him. So I'll be curious to see where he goes. I could see him going third, fourth round, just given like some of those limitations that even though, again, like he, got to play 15 shl games this year um and like he got the typical treatment of like you're small and you're a score go play in the shl on the fourth line for like three minutes um Legal so, I put the tier, so i put the tier 55 to 65 i would love to have like i really try to convince myself to go early second round but i understand the uh the limitations some people might see but like Again, all he does is produce points. Like, he is so fun to watch. I love Oscar Goulet. He's going to be a sneaky son, a, a son sleeper. There we go. Number nine, which this one, Z, I am going to tee up, and I'm about to piss my pants. So I'm going to run and do that. Don't worry. After this, we'll give you a little pee break before we go into the second segment slash Second episode, I guess, Parisha. Number nine, Linus Erickson. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, Erickson is just a a very... I'm shocked that there's not more uh, Ericksons in the NHL from Sweden. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> he is a fascinating one because he is a phenomenal two-way center. His points don't necessarily jump off the page at you. Um, he's been heavily, heavily leaned on in the J20 when he's played there uh, for his defensive prowess. He flashes offensive upside. I mean, again, he got 29 games in the offensive this year. He put up 11 points, which is like he put up 21 points in 25 games in the J20. Um, so, like, there is offensive talent and skill in there. Like, 
He's definitely more of a playmaker than a goal scorer. Does not like to shoot the puck, but when he does, he does have a good shot. So it's one of those weird, like, kind of phenomenons. But um, I, I think if the points, if there are more points there for him, he would go higher. He also this the second half of this season, um, he has blown in the rankings where. Like I put his tier 65 to 75 just outside the second round. That probably will not stand true. I think he'll probably go mid second round. Um, now I have plenty of buddies who have him even like early in the first round. Um, but I mean, six foot, 185 pound center, really, really solid advanced two way game. Um, he does flash the playmaking ability, he's a great passer. You'd like to see him use a shot a little bit more and be a little bit more selfish. That's just not kind of his go-to, but um, definitely one to watch. I think if he goes late second, early third, like that is another guy with potential steel written all over him. Um, and I mean, that's kind of the commentary on like all of the Swedes this year is like, there's so many guys who you're like, I would love to get this guy in the second round. Um but Linus Erickson, Hoppy, I was just saying Hoppy's back. Um, if he goes late second, early third, he's another guy with like sleeper potential written all over him just because of that advanced two way game. Like, again, like 11 points in 29 all Svenskin games after getting called up from the J20 is, is quite impressive on a really good uh, Drew Garden teams, too. So um, I would. I, I, he, skyrocket the rankings i have i was saying too i have buddies who would like almost if he could have done this all year long would have flirted with like a first round potential um but he's always also like captain of team sweden wherever they go um but he's just a solid solid two-way centerman i like him a lot um so i'm curious to see where he goes so um yeah i like that the conclusive then number 10 in the top 10 list for Swedish draft eligibles in 2024. We got Melvin Fernstrom, which again, not going to get all name team consideration, but like a name that I just enjoy. Like Melvin is a first name is fun. And, you know, I love the, the double dot over the O for Fernstrom. So the we'll umlauts. give him a little nod, a mini nod. That's how you say it in German. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what to make of this player. I couldn't argue with his production the last two years for a Rebro. A Rebro is also a team in the J20 that is like an offensive Harlem Globetrotter esque. Like, I remember, so the J20 is also weird, where the first half of the year, it's every J20 team in the first division. It's like a it's like a league table. And then halfway through, you have the, it's the top 10 and the loser division. So it's like the top 10 teams have their own for the rest of the year. And then the, the team that finishes last in the bottom half, like they have a round robin to not get relegated into like, I forget what the league's even fucking called. Um, so it's very weird, but he, he's got decent size. The foot speed is a big problem. Uh, but I mean, the points are insane. He's got 45 games, 31 goals, 32 assists or 63 points, a plus 25, 28 pin. And he plays fucking hard. He does not give a shit about playing defense, which is a big problem for him given the fact that he's also got like skating issues and the foot speed, but the skill is out of this world. His goal scoring potential is ridiculous. He's also, I think he's right behind while in the um, playoff scoring race too, but you just, the skill in the IQ and the offensive zone is like, it's, I had to put him in the top 10. There were a couple other guys. I was like, debating so some of the honorable mentions but i couldn't argue like he did the same thing last year as a draft minus one um but the arebro team it's comical i think they had the next closest team to them in goals scored i think had like 40 fewer goals like they all they do is just put up like insane numbers like every game it's like 10 to 8 12 to 2 it's it's insane like all they do it's hammered the overs there you go um but 
offensive upside for sure. There's big limitations with the skating and the fact that he couldn't care less about playing defense. I have, I know I have at least two or three buddies that did put him late first round, just given how skilled and how like how good of a goal scorer he is. Um, but again, you can't argue with that kind of production. Um, so I put him right there on 10. I feel sick. I think maybe I was a bit mean putting him in the third round. I think he's a second round guy. Um, a probably. bit mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, the big thing with him is I just can't really knock him as much as I did. Uh, just given his track record of ridiculous offensive numbers. And when he's played for Sweden this year too, when he got called up to their, um, like the U17, the U18, um, in the five nations, he was, I think, either second or third scoring there too. So, like, all he does is score. It's just whether he's going to be able to, like, fit in to an NHL team. Um, because I mean, if you're all points and like you, you're a, not a great skater and you don't give a shit about defense, it doesn't really matter if you're putting up like 1.5 points per game in the Swedish Junior League. He's plus um, 25. So we'll say. He's plus 25. And it, yeah, it, you know, he's going to be one of the guys that's done dirty, just like we see happen to Russians all the time. I don't remember, was it Yurov or someone else where like they torched the league they played most of the year, but then all you see here for Melvin Fernstrom is six games played, zero goal, zero assists, zero points, minus two, zero pims. Like that'll be the stat line that gets read when he's drafted and everyone's like, he sucks. Fuck this guy. <laughs> We took him. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I the thing with him though too is like number one, like the what he plays amongst his peers again, offensive upside is ridiculous. He's also an asshole to play against, and he's six foot one, right around one ninety. So like, we'll that's it. gonna help him. It's gonna help the stock. And like when he chooses to, and he decides to like be engaged, he'll at least try defensively and again like he fucking hits everything that moves when he's there it's just whether or not he's where he's supposed to be so i think you could work with that and plus like if you can get that guy with that kind of offensive upside to just be engaged more like not necessarily like a solid two-way four but if you can get him to be engaged in the defensive zone and give a shit like you've got serious serious potential um in him i think that my big Realistically, the big problem I have is the skating. Like I, I, I have a problem with it. Oh, okay, he has a problem with it. Well, shit, we got through the esteemed top ten list here for the Swedes. This again being the region that Z covers for smart, smart, hard R smart scouting. Or is it hockey? Is it scouting or hockey? Hockey. Smart no. hockey scouting. They did a podcast. They scouting. they briefly did a podcast, and it was George R R Martin. Yeah, yeah. Smart yeah. scouting. Um, but we do have uh, Z remaining. We got to cover some honorable mentions for you. Um, I, I'm just gonna kind of hand it off to you to address those because we've got uh, probably a more extensive list than what we usually see just given that you're a little bit more entrenched with the Swedes. Yeah. So almost all of these guys, I battled with putting them 10. Um, so that's why I included so many honorable mentions. Um, a couple that really stood out. Um, let me pull them up again. Um, Jack Berglund. He's a six foot three, 207 pound center for Farias. Now he also played a bunch of SHL games. Uh, well, I guess not a bunch, but I think like eight or nine, maybe I think I had eight. Um, scored a goal, I think, also in his first or second game. Um, insane skill. Uh, skates well, especially for his size. Not necessarily like a two-way stalwart, but like the offensive upside's there. He scores goals. He makes plays. gives you a little bit of everything. He plays hard. Um, so, you know, whether he ends up as a center or a wing at the NHL level, I think he does become an NHL player just given the fact that he skates as well as he does and the fact that he's that big. Um, and he is very smart, especially with the puck great in transition um so that's another guy i always have my eye on um i think the week before i actually made this list because we were supposed to do this last week but you know <laughs> um one guy he played world juniors for switzerland this year i think it's yamiro ray bear he plays center and wing for hv 71 uh five foot 1076 pounds 
HB71 has a bunch of guys who fit this profile where it's like, I would love to get any of them late second round. Um, insane skill. He did score, I think, literally the week before I made this list. He he put up, if you want to call it the Michigan, if you want to call it a little cross goal. And it was like a snipe. Like I, full the goalie fully had it covered. And it wasn't like a dunk. It was from distance. It was insane. Like it was, it was just unbelievable. But um, also played well in the World Juniors. Now I put up a couple points, I believe, for Switzerland. Um, but crazy, crazy offensive upside. Again, I think you can work with him late second, early third. So I had to include him. Um, and then there's a couple big fucking defensemen. Uh, great name for AIK, left shot D man, uh, six foot two, 200 pounds. Daryl Yuljanskis. Is that what I'm saying? Um, another, again, big, big boy. Great skater, incredibly mobile with the puck along the blue line, 29 points in 44 games. I could see him going. I put his tier 75 to 85. I think he'll go earlier just given like how well he skates, how well he defends the fact that like he is not a plug offensively. Like he is like his skill. He's got a great shot. So I think he'll probably go a little bit earlier than that. Um, But real fun to watch. Name Latvian. That's all I care about. Mm hmm. Um, and then just eh, two more that I'll spend any like more, that I'll spend more than like 30 seconds on. Uh, Herman Troff, six foot three, 200 pounds on the wing. Um, he ended up playing 10 SHL games this year for HB 71, 21 points in 26 games in the J20, 73 penalty minutes. Um, he plays fucking hard and he scores goals. I think it was, yeah, 13 goals and eight assists. Um, ridiculous, ridiculous shot. Um, and again, he is the worst, the worst to play against. He is such a fucking asshole. Um, so I think teams will love him too. There, he had plenty of like early second round love too. At one point, I think the thing with him is like, yeah, the shots there. I question the playmaking. So in terms of like, yeah, his actual offensive upside, there's questions there. But like in terms of like an NHL style. Teams are going to love the way he plays. And he is a great skater at his size. So that's one guy. Um, and then a big, another for AIK as well. He plays with Yul Janskis. <laughs> Gustav Spokvist, uh, six foot three, 200 pounds, defensive defenseman. Mean, mean, mean. 42 games, 12 points, and 65 penalty minutes. Um, I think at one point, my buddies over at EP Elite Prospects had him early second too. I just the upside you have to question, but in terms of his defensive ability, how well he skates at his size and how fucking mean he is to play against, um, you know, I think that's a NHL defenseman, no doubt. Um, but the guy I really had to battle with to not put in the top ten was Carl Sterner, right wing for for, uh, for London, six foot three, hundred ninety pounds, um, thirty four points in forty four games elite defensive forward that does flash some playmaking ability. Um, I could see him just given the fact that he's the size that he plays at how well he moves and how smart he is in the two way value you get out of him. I could see him going earlier than I put him. I put it like 80 to 95 just because yeah. I do somewhat question the upside because it's just like not consistent enough offense for me to put him like firm second. Um, but I like him, like him a lot. And Carl, then I do. Good to mm-hmm. see you. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> one guy, though, that I do need to mention real quick because he plays on the same team, plays the same fucking way as my boy, the greatest hockey player of all time, Phil Tinder Storm. Great name. Zaki, Z A K I, Crooks. That is fun. Big. But skinny, he's like 6'1", 160 pounds. Incredible right wing, like dynamic playmaker. If he gets hit, he gets killed. <laughs> so it's going to be a big problem. <laughs> but like his transition game, his cross ice play, like in the offensive zone, like his ability to just like no look, just feeding it from the corner to the back door tap ins is it's a joke like he is so fun to watch i think he'll go 
third round, probably just because he does need to figure out how to not get like crushed every game, but very fun to watch. Very, very fun to watch. Um, so he's like sneaky. One of my favorites. I was watched because of Unger Sorum last year. I was watching a ton of Zachy Crooks. Um, and if he was just not 160 pounds getting fucking absolutely obliterated at times, he would be much higher than he is, but he is very, like, he is the skill, the passing ability. It's, it's, it's awesome. Um, so I like him a lot. Nice. There's also, I put, I did throw a five, seven guy in there. Elliot Segrell also AIK. Uh, That's very fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. He's a beauty. Like um, but yeah. That's all you have to say. I threw him in just because his height. Oh, he's filthy. He's <laughs> filthy. Why wouldn't you say that? <laughs> but like, like you're doing him so dirty. Like he watches and he's like, oh yeah, I threw him in because he's five seven. Moving on. Yeah. I'm what? sure he is watching. I'm sure he is. I know he is. Yeah, obviously. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> it's just funny. Um, shit, that's that's everyone then, huh? Did it? Did the thing? Mm -hmm. So anyone that is tuning in for the live stream, we're going to take a quick two minute break because I know Z is going to piss his pants and I know he's going to need another couple of beverages. Uh, anyone uh, listening on podcast right now, we will have a second episode dropping tomorrow, whatever that means for you. So if Isha ends up dropping this episode on Thursday, next one's going to be Friday. If he drops it Friday per usual, next one will be Saturday. But we will be talking about uh, two things. Well, I'm sure we'll get into many other things because that's just what we somehow managed to do. But we're talking Brock Faber versus Connor Bedard. And we are talking Scott Wheeler's 2024 NHL draft tiers. As uh, recently released on The Athletic. So stick around if you're on the live stream. If you're listening on podcast, uh, five-star reviews, check out YouTube. Look at all these great highlight reels. He likes dogs. Great uh, sweatshirt. This, this, this isn't my shirt. It's Frank's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but uh, we love you all. We'll talk to you next time uh, being tomorrow. All right, people on the stream, we will catch you back here in just a second. I got to figure out how Isha has all this wired up. Let's see. Oh, he throws this overlay up. Stream will resume. And then he oh, just uh, throws on the break music. And I'm running. And I'm running.
sweet Jesus. <coughs> We're back. Was, I, We're doing the I, thing. I, this is gonna be I, weird. I, this, is, this is the start of another podcast episode, and you didn't open it with "We're back." We're doing the thing. We're back still episode 105 and now 106 here with my good buddy mr at spoke z oh spoke z how you doing <laughs> i i don't like this <laughs> i don't like this at all uh <laughs> didn't like that how gold is your gold chain oh shit yeah, no, it's still doing that. It's still being gold and shaking up with that bad Larry back in there. Um, Sick. By the way, I, I, I just, how do you like this sweatshirt? It's just, I like dogs. Quick. It's great. Dude, I, shocking. Um, it's most of my clothing purchases go. I found this while I was about one or two or a couple, two, three deep at the drop. Instagram ad. And I was like, what am I not going to fucking buy this right now? As Roscoe tackles you. Yeah, you got to. Express ship. Thank you. Overnight. Need it. Vibes were immaculate. Oh my God. If, if, which we'd hate this, Free we would bet. hate this, but if BU beats Minnesota to advance to the Frozen Four, you got to wear that crew neck to the games if BC's not there. I love dogs. It's perfect. Be like, oh, I wonder who's so versatile. Like, people will be like, wait, is he, is he talking about the animal? Is he talking about the terrier? Like, what is it? Like, we don't know. It's a versatile, that's versatile apparel right there. That's what you love about that. Um, shout out to all the bots. Shout out to all the bots for sticking around. Bots very... sticking around. We still got like 20 of you degenerates from YouTube, which we love. Uh, Facebook that's just insane. really letting us down. You guys suck. Sorry. Um, yeah, the uh, bots on uh, the Twitter slash X are very, very uh, aggressive here. On the tail end of this stream, um, Elon himself is Mike not that cutting. That yes, that, so he was very excited coming back. Uh, Z, how excited are the local 28 year olds about RA being single? I didn't even realize that was a thing. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. It's, I don't know. Uh, fucking, that's a whole other. You know, uh, how has RA been married <clears throat> this long? And then all of a sudden, some line that didn't exist has now been crossed where they're yeah. divorced like did he just hit a certain monetary threshold where she's like okay if i get divorced now i i i make out pretty good or like <laughs> how does that work could you'll be shocked to know i couldn't tell you um you know i'm not i was i actually was messaging with him the other day just chatting real quick did not bring this up though uh left that one there uh, what what yeah. were you chatting about? What did you chat him up about? How much you love yeah. dogs? Or I think it was something about just something absurd that he said. I think it was about the tavern where he drinks. It was, it was there was a conversation with one of their episodes, and he was explaining as part of the bar. I was in tears. I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it was funny as shit. I was like, oh god, people have no, people don't under like. The tavern is just a and then and then he sends you a picture of uh his beer with a straw in it, and you're like best yeah. friends forever. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. I would he are, is he is are they gonna be up. in St. Paul before? <clears throat> I have no fucking idea. Because like I don't uh, want to fucking see Mike Grinnell, but RA would be an okay hang, especially if we go to a dive bar. Wait, it dude hit it's funny as shit. Like his not that I've like I have not gone out with RA, but his accent uh, allegedly like it, if you if you hypothetically had gone out with him what might have hypothetically happened no but like he had like anyone who has a boston accent like him mm. it's like if you catch the most minor buzz it is you yeah. sound it is like that guy might die if he has another beer. I don't know. Like if he has, like, he might die on the spot. Like you're, you're like, ah. no, there's nothing in his throat. Okay. <laughs> it's fucking unbelievable. Oh shit. See, like meeting up with him, wit biz, like that'd be cool. Just like keep Grinnell like several arm lengths away from me. That guy's just yeah. not, he's Hockey not a good guru. hack. Hockey guru. 
he'll probably be busy blowing like every player for North Dakota anyway. So whatever. I was gonna say, uh, Jason Howard just said Merles is going. Yeah, I th- I, th- I, th- they, I think they went last year. The, the river. Sure, but why would you be a podcast like theirs and not be at every single Frozen Four? That just seems dumb. Yeah, I think they. Went. I want, I want Arm yeah. Dog. I want uh, Armstrong. He is. He's the best. He's so I good. told you so. He, I, I enjoyed him when he was in Pittsburgh, and obviously it was like pretty short lived. But him and Sid were boys, and there was a game where he played. Fuck, I'm trying to remember now because it's like that far back. I don't remember if he was with the Thrashers or if they were the Jets at the time. After the the swap of Hosa and Depuy. God, I can't remember which, but <clears throat> I'm at a wild game and it's one of the few times where I'm like behind the bench. It was Atlanta Just of the me. opposing team. We'll say Atlanta. That sounds way more fun. And the whole game, I'm yelling to him shit like, I'm strong. I wish you were still in Pittsburgh. Like, just like that kind of nonsense, right? And he, me can't, too, buddy. He can't hear what I'm saying, but he knows I'm yelling at him. So he thinks I'm chirping him. And the whole game, I swear to God, he is looking up at me and he is fucking like chirping back. And it was so funny. And at the very end of the game, they win. I think it was an overtime game. Maybe it was just like an end of game heroic win. It's long ago enough. I don't remember. But they won. And he rushes off the ice. And he goes down the tunnel right by me. And he looks up. And he's just like, woo! I'm just like, dude, I I don't know. Yeah. What do. I'm, <laughs> I, I, want, I want you to not be on this team and go back to your previous team because I like that team. I love you. Please, like, don't take this as me hating you. It was just funny. But, like, he was so- I'm on your side. I'm like, I'm on your side, buddy. How <laughs> many guys do you think he's just, like, as soon as someone says something to him, he's like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? We're doing that tonight? All right, let's go. He has. Say hi to your mother for me. Say hi. <laughs> Zero. No, I, I'm not. I can't. I can't fucking. Uh, right, yo, that's cool. What's that about? I like cool, your beard. Cool. Did you see my beard in the perfect storm? What's that all about? <laughs> What's that all about? Uh, but yeah, <laughs> he he does have he has two of my favorite stories, like, and I can't remember if he where I oh God I can't remember where I heard the first one, but like he, he obviously on the road he was Sid's roommate early on in their careers or whatever. Well, they were boys, dude. They, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like like it was basically like Sid's in a love triangle between him and Flurry. Yeah, 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 Armstrong was gone. He's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was always you, Mark. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but he would say like, yeah, the obviously on the road they all got fucking shit faced. Sid went home early because he was like, I don't know, nineteen and like having important shit to do the next day. And the plus, game. his landlord was uh, a little strict. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, do you think he ever but, like, accidentally called Mario dad? How do you not? I would. I would. Sorry, I've yeah. never, never met the fucking guy. Well, but it, okay. I would. <laughs> it's different if you're Sidney Crosby. Like for us, like, yes, I would like try and accidentally be like, dad. Sorry. And like hope that he like slowly just ingratiates me. He's like, oh yeah, that's my son. I'd be like, fuck Ooh. yeah. That, yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, by the way. I will retire. I will retire I, now. My Pittsburgh Penguins obsession, like sure. They've had a great stretch lately. Not lately, <clears> sorry. <throat> over the past like two decades, but. Meryl Lemieux is the reason that I love the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, that Decent guy, reason. come and try and tell me that Wayne Gretzky's better. I'll fight you. Like, oh boy. He, oh, I'm sorry. I, I read a biography of his when I was in like, and it's going to sound dumb. I don't know if I was in third or fourth grade because I literally had the same teacher for both grades. And this guy was like the Stay best teacher here. I ever had, my hero. And like we had some fucking biography assignment and he like sees me just like kind of not really participating. It's like, well, what's the matter? You can't find a book. I'm like, I I don't give two shits about presidents, except back then it's like, I don't like presidents. And he's like, you like hockey, right? I'm like, yeah, I guess he's like, just pulls Lemieux off the shelf and hands it to me. He's like, read this. And ever since then, I have been obsessed with Mario Lemieux. Like all the shit he went through, dude. That his return game in Philly, 
you'll never convince me that there's been a more iconic game in NHL history than that guy fucking doing his last radiation treatment at 7 a.m. and flying in and getting to the game in time and getting Philadelphia fans to fucking standing ovation a Pittsburgh player that has never and will never happen again. That's when I was hooked. I just knew like, okay, this guy's different. And that that's all she wrote. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he is. And Matt, it just if he was never, if he was yes, actually Mateo, the one in the elementary library. library. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he's different. And again, like obviously Gretzky's got the records, but if you look at what Lemieux you did at the same time, and you look at literally the best years of his career being taken away due to back and cancer issues, I'm not saying that he's decidedly better. I'm saying that there is absolutely a world where if he has a full bill of health he ends up being a guy that people view as better than Gretzky. And I'm just going to hold on to that. There you go. Yeah. Decided. Decided. It's official. It's over. It's official. I also always um, just like, was weirdly obsessed with the fact that he was 66, Yager was 68, and their expansion team yeah. was part of the 67 expansion. I'm a weird numbers guy. I don't know. Just like Crosby, Crosby's next contract is going to be 8.7 because he just doesn't know any other way to do it. <laughs> He's like, I, what do you mean? You're offering me more than. That. No, no, I, I, I don't want that. That's not an option. No, pass. Sid, what do you want? The exact, the exact same, the exact same thing. I don't know why. What? If you what take away you the McDonald's arches on our ice rink, I will quit. I will retire or I will go sign with Philadelphia. Like, fuck you. Okay, Imagine. Okay. It, stays, it stays. Especially now that there are Krispy Kreme donuts at McDonald's. Here we go. Imagine. See. Imagine if the Pittsburgh Penguins did what Detroit did with the fucking uh, advertisement on the Jersey mid-win streak. Ooh. Sid? His wouldn't have it, and the advertiser would lose their mind. And... <laughs> <laughs> the advertiser would have been wrong. <laughs> there, it's, there, it's. I, I loved though early on Sid, where he was a Sherwood guy, but he refused to use a Sherwood stick, so he just had a pure black hockey stick, and no one knew what he was using. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the hell out of that. <laughs> He's tapped. He is. Let's see how how did we not in yesterday's episode talk about the fucking. <laughs> Krispy Kremes by the end of 2026 will be in every McDonald's in the country. This is terrifying. Like we should stop Hang that. On, though. The the McGang Bang, right? Great hidden menu oh. item. I love it, by the way. Like even even sober, I could eat a McGang Bang. That's like a solid food option. Not good for you in any way, but it tastes good. I actually had uh so one of my college buddies actually rented from me when I bought my current house. He lived in this recording studio for two years until I got married. Uh, we went out, his dad's got season tickets. So we went down there for at Chicago for a uh, Blackhawks Penguins game. And uh, we went out and did top golf. One of the days we were out there and they had these like glazed donut sliders. And it was literally glazed donuts with burger patty in the middle. And it actually wasn't bad. It actually tasted good. It scares me. I just uh, I'm afraid so of it. The new hidden menu item at McDonald's, once we've got Krispy Kreme, which is a, a vastly superior glazed donut. Like I'm not a glazed donut guy. I'm a guy that wants like a like some kind of filled donut. Krispy Kreme is fucking money. We're gonna have the McBeaties. Oh. Everyone that gets it is gonna have diabetes, but it's gonna be so worth it. Shit, half this country already has diabetes for all we fucking know. Yeah, that's fine. Well, disgusting. Yeah, but also, yeah. It's, good. Well, it's a couple more. It's a couple more. It's fine. I'm and yes, uh, Jamie Wood, the saddest thing, the iconic Dinky Town McDonald's. What a great place. RIP in peace. Pour one out for the homies that are gone. Um, but all right, see, let's. Uh, actually get on track here favorite bedard i 
it's great that this is such an obsession for everyone, especially Chicago people, because like end of the day, if we're being honest, neither is a clear cut winner, but Minnesota fans are going to say Faber's the clear winner. Chicago fans are going to say Bedard's the clear winner. And everyone's got to wade between, especially given that they are completely polar opposite players in every sense of the word. Um, again, I think it's really cool. Looking forward, uh, shout out Fellowship of the Rink uh, with Joe Smith. My comment there was, I love that these two are probably going to be captains of their teams long term. And they're going to elevate their game playing against each other regularly in the central division. And it's a matchup that we're going to talk about every year. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Like Bedard's going to win. Like they love. He will. No, yeah. of course. No, that it's, it's required. But the question is who should win. Yeah. And here's the thing. Literally, I think a month, month and a half ago, I was on here and I was like annoyed because first of all, the was still hurt. And I was like, the fact that people are making this a conversation is so annoying to me because like, look at what each one is doing. Like Brock Faber as a rookie has almost 10 games where he is playing 30 minutes on I don't know, an average hockey team and has been their most consistent player. Yep. And the entire time. But let me interject too, because this is really fun to uh, pump the argument. Uh, probably didn't see it because no one sees anything that I post on Twitter, but uh, I regularly listen as we talk about here regularly. That's a lot of regular release, but uh, the Jeff Merrick show. And of course, Elliot Friedman is on with him for at least one segment of that show every day. And Friedman, you know, he's going to carry the water for Canada. He's going to be all over Connor Bedard's jock. But he said something just, uh, I think it was yesterday as we record, which I don't know if this comes out Friday or Saturday. We're doing the whole time traveling thing that Z hates. I think Tuesday is when it would have come out, though, for those listening where he talks about uh, not Jack, not Quinn, but Luke Hughes Luke. and him years. being thrust into a position that he's not quite ready for. This is a guy that was a stud in college, but you know what? In, in the pros, he's not quite ready for the role he's been elevated to, which let's be real. It's fucking like number four defenseman. Brock Faber has been elevated to the number one defenseman for the Minnesota wild, a team that's already cap strapped and he has thrived in the role. A guy that on his college team didn't even play power play time and has usurped everyone previous. He banished one of my other sons in Kalen Addison because he could just jump in and play power play. No big deal. And he basically talked about how hard it is and like, Oh, he's going to be a star in the future. But like, you can't expect these rookies to come in and be able to play an elevated role, especially on defense. And it's like, okay, Elliot. So you're not supporting Bedard anymore then because you basically just puked out every defense possible for Brock Faber. And I, again, long-term, <clears throat> Connor Bedard is going to be the better player in the NHL long term. We know that. But the way I'd frame it to you, Z, and it's going to vary by team, but by and large, if we go majority, if you're a team that is in the playoff hunt or solidified in the playoffs, and you can add either Connor Bedard or Brock Faber to have throughout the playoffs, which one do you take? I bet at least 51% take Brock Faber. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't. Uh, that's. Tell if me I'm you're wrong. A playoff. If you're a playoff team, like that's what. So that's the thing. It varies by the team. Again, there's teams that have strong blue lines. There's teams that are completely deficient at blue line. In a vacuum, which one helps you more in pursuit of the Stanley Cup? And again, completely different players. But darts the game breaker. 
Like that's the thing. Well, Michael Curtis says that I am wrong. So I'm sorry, Michael. I apologize. So, no, I'm not going <laughs> to do the grammar thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to take Bedard because he's the legit game breaker. And imagine what he'd be doing if he wasn't the only player on his hockey team. All right. Hang and, on. Like, Let, let's, flip it. Uh, let, let's go with specific teams. If you are the Edmonton Oilers, you're going to take Bedard over Faber? No, obviously not. Like you said, it does depend on the team, but you just threw out a blanket. Know, hey, who are you I taking? Know. I'm like, I'm taking like, you are taking, I'm taking okay. one of okay. the future, Fair. like, because he's going to be on that you level. You get him beyond that. this, though. After this playoffs, they're gone. Yes, the, I'll take Incredible. the game breaker. I'll take the game breaker. Like, he is insane. So, and, but going back to like what I was saying before, I was like, a game breaker. Got it. Not a game breaker. Um, you're wrong. Someone's who's who's <laughs> wrong is it? Um, my wrong. God. My wrong. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And Mateo brings up my favorite one is the minus thirty eight, which I don't think is fair either. Like everyone wants not to fair. the minus thirty eight at Bedard. I'm sorry, it's a dog shit team. Does it matter? Yes. Is it the deciding factor of whether or not Faber or Bedard wins? Fuck no. And as we talked about on Fellowship of the Rink, yep, another uh, shameless plug. I think if you asked Faber and if you asked Bedard, they would both immediately say the other one should win. Yeah. Well, I, I still say Faber should win this year because it's the more impressive season. I also came into this year, like, having watched Brock Faber for a very long time, and I was saying, like, he's not necessarily even going to be, like, a half a point per game guy. He has 40 fucking points in 71 games. And that's not and, like power play all year. It's insane. Like, he's, he's in one year, turned himself into a number one defenseman. Not even one year. Like, literally less than a year. He was their number one defenseman on a dog shit team, especially when the entire roster was hurt. He still was just doing the same thing. So I think the year that he's having is more impressive. So for me... He should be getting the Calder Trophy because also he's number one defenseman on a team that stinks, but somehow still is going to finish the season a team sniffing that's the playoffs. Very true. Very true. Like sniffing uh, the play. The fact that like he's doing this, it's a it's an absurd year. Like it's funny because you said the uh, that Friedman brought up Luke Hughes. Like, you can't expect them to just be thrust. I was like, okay, well Brock Faber entered the NHL that, immediately. Was like, was hey, I'm the number one team man. That was my biggest thing, man. Uh, That's again, what Faber just did. End of the day, like I'm not gonna be mad either Same way. Same points to your games. We we expect Connor Bedard to win because everyone's gonna go with the points. But it's just crazy that like fans on both sides, like Minnesota fans, it's just, annoying. Like, it's it's so annoying. Bedard and it's ridiculous. Chicago fans, oh Brock Faber, look how many points he has in comparison. He's a fucking defensive a defenseman. defenseman. Shut your defenseman. mouth. Play like 30 minutes. What if we have a goaltender that's in consideration? Oh, he has zero points. He's he's garbage. He's worth <laughs> what what's what hang on? What's what's Bedard's uh save percentage or uh goals against <laughs> average? Like yeah. what the fuck are we talking about here? Let's let's go apples to apples. I don't know. Again, great race, and it, it's fun that there's been some intrigue because we thought this was a loaded rookie class, and a lot of the guys have disappointed. Like Logan Cooley's had really good spots, has not done it consistently. And I love Logan Cooley. Matty Nice, same kind of deal, right? Marco Rossi, similar. Like he's been very consistent and doesn't get enough credit, but he hasn't done it quite consistently enough on the scoreboard to warrant being in the tier of can he win the Calder? I think he has every possibility of being a nominee top three, but he's not going to win it. Brock Faber has lapped him. No question. And it's, it's Faber Bedard. I, I, there's not a clear winner here. It's just dumb that both sides are so polarized on their guy winning, especially some of the dipshits in Chicago. And uh, again, we're biased. Like there's Minnesota fans that are idiots that just latch on to the minus 38, which is a, again, I get the point, but, but Dart has done some ridiculous shit. Like you cannot discredit what he has done in the league this year. I, I, I just think the two are so much closer than everyone says. I hope it ends up being reflected 
in the voting. Like, uh, yeah. That's the thing. I don't think it will be. It's going to be no. That's what's going to drive me insane. It's going to be like, a, I feel like it's going to be the Caprizov of Robertson 99 to one. <laughs> if that, that would be, I, you'll never, that, you'll never see me again. That got people so upset. Yeah. Just like, oh uh, God. God, who was it? Was it, uh, was it Seth Horabar or something from Pittsburgh who didn't even have see the one every year? Five. Is he the one? Is he the one every fucking year? Like he had Lars Eller third and Selkie like two years ago. It's like, are you like, fuck off. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Bergeron was like seventh. Like Jesus Christ, dude. Whatever. I, those ones. I'm like, how do you have, how do you have a vote? But whatever. It do, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, listen, I think it should be very, again. So this whole conversation started because I was saying like, a month when Bedard was still hurt before he came back, I was saying this shouldn't be close right now. Like Bedard's doing impressive things by himself in Chicago, but the fact that he's out, Brock Faber's playing 30, he's averaging 25.05 a night with 40 fucking points as a defensive defenseman on a dog shit hockey team. And like it's it shouldn't be close. And then Bedard came back from injury and immediately entered sicko mode and has not stopped. It is going all the way off. He had a he had that five point night the other night, and that's when I hate Chicago Blackhawks fans the most. There was like fifteen mm-hmm. that quote tweeted the video of his fifth point at Russo. It was like suck on that, you stupid fucking asshole. It's like, I mean, good for Russo. Imagine, it means imagine that. having that much real estate. Like that's insane. Like you should just be happy, but whatever. It should be close. Uh, I still lean favor just because I think what he is doing who, hang is on. the more impressive season. See, if we're going to talk real estate, who has more real estate in someone's head? Russo in Chicago fans' heads or Drew Doughty in Minnesota Wild fans' heads? All right, that's close. Because I'm, I'm leaning towards Doughty owning Minnesota Wild real estate in headspace. I think yeah, some of the reactions to the doubt. We're being completely more, honest, like <laughs> more unhinged. I think it's kind of died off more, obviously. Like just given recent, they're like, not really that relevant, but I guess. that was it was a very weird fascination with Drew Doughty when he said he didn't know who Capriza was. Be like, oh, 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 you don't know who I am? Like, no, no, he, said, he said he said he said a, a, a guy that he, he obviously knows exactly who he is like if you thought it okay whatever um um but That's either fair. way but i am fine with either one of them in, I lean. in reality right yeah, we yeah. just hope it reflects but, that in the votes but ours probably gonna win and again he's gonna go yeah. on to have a historic career uh barring injuries that might befall him like he's an incredible player but you cannot when you look at the rookie impact what Faber has done is more impressive and more difficult than what Bedard has done, given the the role he's thrust into, given the pressure. Like Bedard goes out there and plays carefree every night, especially since uh, Corey Perry got sent away and he doesn't have to think about that uh, mm-hmm. nonsense. But maybe that's maybe that was he took the weight off and he was just like, oh wow, I don't have to worry about this anymore. Right, but I don't know. End of the day, anyone that's like freaking out on either side, chill out. I don't know. But I do think that both sides are like extremely rose-colored glasses. Everyone's on annoying. Their yeah. side. It's like everyone annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> I hope so neither of them win. I hope them. neither of them win. Shout out my boy. So I'm glad that I that like it came up briefly there. I am going to now fully bring up Marco Rossi. Twenty fucking goals. Well, he's getting so traded this year, right? He's getting oh, traded God this summer. I don't. I hate sorry. everyone. Hate everyone. Oh, don't don't. But I love him. I'm so fucking happy for that kid. What I mean, he's awesome. And he's playing like he's not getting tap ins, easy goals, power play goal. Like he is a guy. It is an he's absolute, every way, he, every fucking way. He fought. Kate, that was so funny with the, the when he fought Kate and Gooley and the whole bench was going and he was just dying laughing, dude. That was amazing. I am just so happy for him because how many human beings would be able to even like 
I don't know, just continue playing hockey with everything that he's gone through. Like even just the mental aspect of being a top 10 pick and then taking more than one year to get like fully called up in the NHL. Then you mix in the fucking myocarditis and then a disappointing first mini stint in the NHL sent back to the AHL. People are shitting on you for whatever fucking reason. Cause they're fucking weird. Um, and then this year just comes in and like, he's had spurts throughout the year where you might not find him on the score sheet, but he is still playing great defensively and then he is still popping up at big times and scoring goals like i am just very happy for marco rossi um it's just crazy to see like people were hoping he would stick in the lineup at the beginning of this year to just give him a chance and that he immediately was like no yeah i'm not going anywhere and 20 fucking goals good for marco rossi i love him very happy for him and oh, um, also f- also fun fact his dad is a Beauty saw him in his first NHL game in Boston. I was like, "Hey, buddy, both beauties." (laughs) He was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Although, also, shout out Tanner Hartman for uh, crushing Division Three hockey. Oh yeah, Natty, here we go. We love that. Uh, But yeah, I don't know. Let's move on from the Faber Bedard things again. It's such a dumb argument. Like it should be very even and comparable, and I. I can hope the the voting reflects that, but anyone that freaks out either way, I don't know, awards Weird. are fucking stupid. Let's be Weird. honest; like these awards are so dumb. Yeah, let's just move on. But Z, the, what we're really here to talk about is, of course, Scott Wheeler talking about his draft tiers. So anyone that's not a subscriber of The Athletic, you should, because right now, if you go to any article from Michael Russo or Joe Smith, it'll give you an option to subscribe for $1 a month. That is cheaper than like two Starbucks runs, period. Don't be dumb. Go do it. There's a lot of great content across wild NHL, all sports. Just do it. But uh, Scott Wheeler coming in hot. I think we're in agreement on the start here when he breaks out his tiers that Macklin Celebrini sits in his own tier, tier one. Can you even fathom if whoever picks first doesn't take Macklin Celebrini? Is there any no, argument to even be had? No, 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 no. They, they, they should just have him go to the lottery this year instead of like what? It's also so weird, by the way, when there is a debate for first overall and they still have someone that's supposedly projected to go first overall, like in the draft lottery, they like scream to them like, but what if, what if he goes not first? That'd be, that'd be weird. <laughs> like, it's always funny that they, when there's when they're televising the lottery and there's, they only have one guy that's projected to go first overall. Like, it yeah. know, like just randomly pans to him watching at home. It's like, that's fucking weird. <laughs> like Jack Hughes, Capo Gago, there was legit, like, yeah, there was one or the other, and only even, Jack Hughes. They even only Matthews versus Jack Lane, there was like some conversation, right? <laughs> and they would only have one of them. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Why are we doing this to this kid? But whatever. But yeah, no, some of you should go with lottery. A little bit of controversy around him, right? Like, there was discussion that, hey, maybe you take Eichel. Maybe. Even if it's 10%, like, there was some discussion. It was people trying to talk themselves into it, yeah. It also does speak to Jack Eichel, because there's years like this, right, <laughs> where Macklin Celebrini, he is not Connor McDavid, and there is no one else who should even sniff the discussion for first overall. Jack Eichel was a fucking stud. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, warranted yeah. at least being discussed in the same breath, whereas this year that's just not the case. Um, But, 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 but... Let's talk tier two because he has fucking nine, no, 11, 11 guys in tier two, which I feel like is a a big aggressive span for tier two. I want to hear from you. I'm going to read them off. I'm going to go in order and I want you to talk about the guys that absolutely belong in tier two and the ones that you think maybe are a little uh, aggressive or overreaching. We got Artem Levshunov, Ivan Demidov, Cole Iserman, 
Zane Parak, Sam Dickinson, Zeev Boyum at seven, which is the highest I've seen him in a while. Wow. Not going to the wild. Uh, Anton Salayev, eight. That's the lowest I've seen him in the past couple months. Thank God he's coming back down to earth. Berkeley Catton, Consta Hellenius, fun name, very fun name. Caden Lindstrom at 11, and Carter Yakumchuk at 12. And uh, I do believe, uh, if I go back here, let me find it. I believe Mateo has taken quite a bit of issue here with uh, the placement of Lindstrom, but we have way too many comments. I am really struggling to find it. Basically, he's like, wow, putting Lindstrom outside of your top 10 is courageous. But all of those, you got the same article pulled up. Talk to me, like, who belongs? Who's more questionable? Like, how do you see this tier two breaking out? Yeah, I don't really have much of an issue in terms of like. You think they all belong together? This is pretty close. I mean, the one that I totally get the hype around, just given how ridiculous his production's been in the first division on a on a good team in the Finnish first division in Constantinus. That's the highest mm-hmm. I've seen him, but he's having and, yeah. an ab. He is having an absolutely outrageous year, despite the fact that... Pre-season, I think you had him seven or eight. Right. It was... It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, it's important context. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing with him is he pretty much did... I think everyone had him projected as, like, ripping apart, like, the Finnish Junior League. And then, like, getting the occasional call-up to Liga for Eucharit. And he never sniffed the juniors in uh, Liga for Eucharit. He has been in the SHL the whole time. I think he's got like 0.67 points per game. He's like almost at a point per game in the playoffs now for Eucharit. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, the, thing I, the reason that like I don't have him that high now is just because of the other, honestly, the other guys in this tier, the years, the seasons that they're having, that's that's always the thing where it's like a lot of guys pretty much do what they're expected to do, but a lot of players projected to go in similar ranges preseason. That draft season they have is insane. So the thing with this is like, so the guys you listed off, I believe when we did our NCAA USHL rankings, I told you I was like Levshino's going to get plenty of like love at number two overall, uh, and I well, get it I in so. in unbelievably gifted uh in terms of just like offensive upside the skating ability six foot two 200 pounds right shot defenseman he plays fucking hard he's mean um so like that's a bet fully on that ceiling so i totally get it it's just for me the only reason i put him i think i had him closer to 10 um was just like yeah the upside's there I have doubts about if he's going to, first of all, if he'll even get the opportunity to play this way in the NHL, given the fact that like, especially at the beginning of this season, he was the, um, the poster child of, Oh, look, we turned the puck over and his controller just died. Like he was just like (laughs) gliding backwards, like not even trying to like skate. Uh, but it did get better as the years gone on. And I mean, again, like you want to see, you want to bet on that upside. It is, it is insane. Well, all right. Z, Z, so I get it. But... Team agnostic is Love Shunov your first defenseman off the board. You're, you're a GM or you're a Judd Brackett for a team. Is Love Shunov your first defenseman? Let's say you cannot take a forward, but you got the first overall pick. Who is your defenseman? Yeah, probably him or Dickinson. So Dickinson's is it crazy to you that there. Zane Parekh is one ahead of Sam Dickinson in the rankings no, here? My, he's got probably the same kind of upside as Levshunov. The concerns are only amplified in terms of like defensive ability. But again, like he's even shown flashes this year. But like he is setting every OHL record as far as like defensive scoring. And I mean, I think he's got at this point for Saginaw, I think he's got like 80 something points as a D man. 
as a draft minus one, he put up 20 fucking goals as a defenseman. He is like the upside with him is yeah, out of this it's, world. So he's right there. We totally get it. Is six of the top 12 being defensemen crazy Not sure. for you? No, because there's that, that's the thing with this class is it's it's pretty D heavy, especially no, so in terms of just like the tools and upside. Not like for this class, just in general. Like there's not yeah. years where we see six of the top twelve be defensemen. That's pretty rare. Right. I do think the one trend you see though quite often is like if you look at like any public scouting outlet, they'll have way fewer defensemen in the top half of the first round go than what happens. Like not last uh, actually, no, yeah, last year, I think like 10 defensemen went in the first round or something like that and i think the pub the consensus was like maybe three or four so like if you are a defenseman with like insane upside or you're like a big mobile defenseman who like can hold their own offensively but like are defensively stout like you're probably going to go higher than a lot of people would like project you that don't work for nhl teams so like i mean again like prime candidate we brought him up last episode not not earlier in this show. That's not what happened. Um, Theo Lindstein, he went in the first round. I think everyone had him late second, early third. Like, I think every, any, like, most people anyways, other than, like, you know, Tom, Corey Prodman, who does the Bobby Mack and, like, gets the scouting opinions of the NHL teams. Sure. Um, All right, well, but, is he so giving- it's not surprising, but, like, this well, year I- especially, in it, it's not surprising for this class, but um, because there are so many defensemen who have, like, insane ceilings of tools um it's just whether or not like the guys at the top it's like yeah like if they hit holy like that is one of the best players in the nhl like that they're, they're that level of like upside it's just i have more doubts about like that coming to fruition obviously so i'm gonna put you on the spot then i'm gonna say that 11 in one tier especially the second tier is aggressive you're picking minimum three that you're booting from this tier. Who are your three? Uh, Helenius. Oh, wait, wait. Defenseman? No, just, players. It's just players. Like, okay, 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 okay. Yep, so, uh, so 12 to two, pick three that don't belong. I would go in terms of tier two. Helenius. Oh, I don't know if I can even do that with a third. You have to. I know. If I have to. Who's the other one? Oh, I hate that. (laughs) I figured you'd pick Salayev, but Helenius, okay. Give me a third. Come on. Rip the band-aid. You know who you're going to pick. No, I don't. Well, there's two that I am. Tell me the two. Yakim Chuck. Okay. And uh, Iserman. Yakim Chuck. Yakim Chuck. Iserman. Number four Iserman is on that block. Still says a lot, right? Yeah. Again, like it. he is so interesting. Just like. He is like the best goal scorer period in this draft. Like it is. So, but what else? (laughs) That's, that's the problem. It's just like, there are so few games where he's driving play. (coughs) Again, he's another guy. I can at least say as the year went on, you saw the, like the defensive engagement pick up. I don't know how much it's saying, and again, for me, still a top 10 guy. Um, and I kept him in that tier too, because you just like the goal scoring, like he just that's the thing. It's like, do you even need someone to drive play for him to score goals? I don't know. <laughs> like he might just like just get like, just give it to him, just give him the puck, and he can do it. Like he scores in every single way. Like he just just if you forget that he is on the ice, there is a good chance the puck will end up in the back of the net. Like it's just how it happens. It's just how often is he going to be able to influence your team having the puck? It's, it, that's the question. That's why there are plenty of people who have him closer to 10 than, um, than like four. So, um, 
But Yakim Chuck, like this year, he's having an ab- absurd year, and he is six foot three, the meanest defenseman in terms of like high upside in the WHL. He's got like 115 penalty minutes too. Fights solid enough defensively and the offensive upside this year has taken a whole other like he's always had it but this year it's just been consistent like he's making plays he's dancing on the blue line it's not just to like meat and potato hockey which he used to do at one point um but if i had to the third choice to to kick out of tier two would probably be yakim chuck even though i think he's going to be a fucking animal in the nhl yeah, I mean, that's fair. Again, he's going to go high. He's going to go fair. high. You're just saying, like, again, tiers, it feels ridiculous to have 11 players in tier two. That That's a big range, and that's the like Steeler being kind of a coward. I don't know. I, I guess my question would be, like, what are the tiers? Ba- like, is it, like, I mean, outside tiers, of, like, all Any of these players could be in a similar range of – draft or post draft outcomes right oh. like do you do you really think that all of these players should be mentioned in the same breath i don't think so but uh, again it's fair i would say i get it i i do I, i'm not saying that it's like ridiculous it's just yeah i remember because like Pronman, Pronman, like with the athletic Pronman used to like the start of the article he would define the tiers so like tier one would be like nhl superstar then tier two would be like upside of like top line NHL all star. You know what I mean? Like a whatever, like first line scoring forward, first line center with like all star potential. And then you would break it down from there, or whatever. So I'd be curious to see like what the tiers are actually broken down and like how you like what tier two actually fucking means. Cause if it's like tier two is number two overall, that's like, okay, that's, that's different. <laughs> no, no, right. No, right. I know. I know. I know. I know. That's, I know. That's not, no, it, I think it's somewhere in between, right? It's not saying they should be in discussion for number two overall, but I also yeah, feel yeah. like number two and number 12 shouldn't be in the same fucking tier. That's my opinion, but yeah. maybe it is that tight. Let's talk tier three then. And I, We can skip past number 13 because you yesterday went at length on Michael Bronseg Nigord. Number 13 is MBN Uh, running through the remainder of, uh, I believe it's the top 20 then to round out to the third tier. So we got MBN. We've got Michael Hag, Tisha Ginla, Liam Greentree, Trevor Conley, Aaron Kiviaru, which is one of my favorite it's names in this draft, Adam Yurichek, and Igor Chernyshov. I want you to talk to me about two that you personally love in this tier and two that you'd consider pushing out of this tier. Okay, so we're going to pretend like MBN isn't here because he obviously, for me, you know. Right, right. we're not talking about him. That's just separate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if well, you didn't like, listen to yesterday's episode. Just go back and listen. That's yeah, on yeah. You. Hit pause. Uh, Hit pause. Go back. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, also, uh, uh, unsubscribe, resubscribe, undownload, redownload. Just do the whole thing. Just give us more likes. But uh, yes, it's fun. Everyone me. loves it. Or give me two you love, two that you'd consider pushing out. Oh. For your ranks, not league wide ranks. I want your opinion. Right. I would say that I'll start with the ones I push out. Let I me guess. Probably... Eric, Kivi Haru. Kivi Haru. Just because of the health concerns. Big time health. I mean if he, I'm gonna... if he doesn't get hurt, are you saying that? I don't know because the start of the year he it was not good. Okay. Like, he didn't... Fair. So, Fair. Like, the flashes are there and I totally get betting on the upside because he is absurd. He's a Bottom line is he's a five foot nine left shot defenseman who has skating issues, even though he's like very mobile, but in terms of speed okay. um, and he can get fucking tossed around, but he is unbelievably smart. The skill is through the roof. So in terms of like raw upside, that's why so many people will convince themselves to keep him 
at the very least late first round. There's plenty of people who are having him out of theirs just because the health has been such a problem. Even when he, when he was healthy at the start of the year, it wasn't the same that everyone was expecting. So I would have to push him out. And again, same thing, like sure. health concerns, I might have to push out your sec because there was just a bunch of inconsistency with him too where like <clears throat> some of the best parts of his game when he was healthy like – just completely disappeared sure when he was going up and playing um in the like the first league in czechia he looked like he was either like just fitting in or looked out of place but then he goes and plays amongst his peers and he's great um but like when you have watched him for a while and you understand like how good of a skater he is how hard he plays and then it would just like disappear so often this year even when he was healthy um i still think like this is probably even if he gets some kind of injury this still feels like the correct tier but in terms of these guys that are in this tier, and like i would probably have to push them out just given the health concerns giving the consistency um and how like at times out of place he looked playing in the first division over there um and then to the well one guy I really wanted to make sure that we at least touched on because of how insane his second half of the year has been and how like even with that in mind given what he went through at the end of last year into the summer Michael Haig what a fucking second half of the year so like last year had major think either like early summer or right at the end of the season had like major shoulder surgery and then over the summer his dad passed away so he's been go like he has just had a horrific few months star of the year finally comes back and basically caught fire like december and the shit he is doing now in the ushl is insane like he can make plays he can score goals he's a phenomenal two-way centerman he's got good size like he's checking every box so that now at this point coming into the year um even with the injury he was like fringe first probably if he hadn't got injured he'd probably be mid to late um but just given how well he's played the second half of the year there's plenty of others who would have him right around like the 15 range anyways. So, um, but just given how much he's gone through, it's like in less than 12 months. The fact that he has played like gotten back to the player that he was and then some like coming up, like he's always been like a top, top prospect and like guys that everyone was looking for or looking at like the last few years. Uh, the fact that he is back to that and he's added like different elements to his game. I love seeing him getting like all the love he deserves. So good for him. Sure. Um, Let's pause then Z tier three feels like prime territory for the Minnesota wild. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know MBNs at the top of your list. Again, anyone that didn't listen, go no. back to, listen to yesterday's episode, but I want you to break down for me who you'd like to see the Minnesota wild specifically take from tier two, give me your top two non MBN guys. Liam Greentree, six foot two, left shot, right winger, 206 or 207 pounds, apparently. Uh, again, dual threat in the offensive zone. He plays fucking hard. He's mean, plays a good two way game. His top end skill is in, it's just, he's so fun to watch. I think. Our rankings for smart scouting that are going to drop again soon. I think he ended up top 10 for us. Like he, like the upside is insane. He's got the size. He plays hard. Like he plays that game already. Like the, the one that'll translate for sure. Um, so I would love to see Liam green tree. Question is like, do you need the right winger? But I don't care. Like I bet on that upside all fucking day long. Um, so I'll go him. Um, and then out of tier three, if I'm not going NBN, Tish again, La. Give me Tish again, La. Holy fuck. This year for Kelowna, like, what he's doing is more impressive than, like, what Andrew Cristal did last year for Kelowna. 
Um, like he is by himself, absolutely taking over games. And like, obviously it gets overblown whenever, you know, players have like NHL bloodline. He literally, he's not fighting guys like Jerome did. Sure. But he is, I mean, he is killing people. But like whenever Kelowna has like a period where they're just doing nothing, he's like, okay, it's my game now. And he is taking over games and going sports center top 10 mode quite often. Like the shit he's doing this year is 15 is probably around the range you go. I would even take him sooner. Like the upside is it's a joke. Like, game breaking ability again he can he can play center most likely a wing i feel like just let him fucking like concentrate on like scoring goals um but not yeah, following go those, so. lines at all with that but no, i was gonna say i was like well yeah. <laughs> nope fair okay well let's move on then to tier four so starting at 21 and we are going through oh shit this goes into the second round oh this is a long list holy shit i think we're gonna stop then at uh tier four because <laughs> yeah, it'll go forever if not and i'm uh calling it quits so tier four i'll just read off the full list we're gonna talk your favorite guys we don't even need to go into the ones that you maybe think don't belong because it's such a big tier that they probably all belong right so, starting at 21, we got Emil Hemming, Henry Muse, Beckett Seneke, awesome name, goddamn, Tarek Parashak, which is also a great name, Maxim Massey, Sasha Boyvert, your boy, Leo Saline Willanius, Ryder Ritchie, Andrew Basha, Merrick Vanneker, who I honestly am not familiar with Cole Hudson. That's actually the highest I've seen him in a little bit. That's first round tier, which I mean, we know Scott Wheeler is a short King. So jet Luchanko Tanner, how one outside of the first round, which uh, we, we've talked plenty about how he's being disrespected. Nikita Artemo, Ar- Artemonov. I, I'm giving up on that. Charlie Ellick. Lucas Pedersen, Matve Gryden, Simone Zether, Cole Bodwin, Luke Misa, Igor Shuren, and Dominic Badenka. We've talked about a lot of these guys in the previous regional specific rankings. Talk to me about some of your favorite guys in this massive tier that uh, Scott Wheeler's put together. Yeah, the one guy that sticks out at 26, Sasha Boyevere. Love him. Six foot two center. Um, again, dual threat offensively, like dynamic playmaking, can score goals himself. And again, like he is mean to play against, and he plays a good two way game. So I would see him, I could see him going higher than 26. I think plenty of NHL teams have had him on their radar for a long time. Um, and I mean, like scoring 30. In the USHL, as a draft eligible, is incredibly impressive. Uh, so I love Sasha Boyver. Again, I think there's a chance he goes higher than 26. I could see him like even like late late teens, um, just given like the fact that he is the size that he is. He plays center to a game and with the offensive upside. Um, I love Andrew Basha. Like 29, I get it, but at the same time, still feels somewhat disrespectful to me. Just such a smooth player in transition. Ridiculous skill, dynamic playmaking. It's very fun watching him play with Caden Lindstrom because Caden Lindstrom's six foot a million. Um, and, <laughs> and then Andrew Basha, like 5'11", feels generous again. Um, he is one of the older players in this draft, so that's always going to hurt you a little bit. But sure. like his transition play, it's a joke. Like He is so smooth. Um and again, just like the, the skill that he has and how smart of a player he is. I love Andrew Basha. Sneaky, great name. Um, I love seeing Jet Luchenko get first round love. I don't have him in my first round, but he is a phenomenal player to watch. Another all name team guy. Crazy, crazy skill. Nonstop motor. Um, very, very fun player to watch. I'm 
he's one of the guys I'm also fascinated to see where he does end up going. Um, again, Tanner Howe at 33. Again, get it, but still feels disrespectful because like he's just doing exactly what he did last year when he was supposedly playing with Bedard, even though they played on separate lines most of the time. On a Regina pass team, that still fucking stinks. And he has, like, he's, like, production is better. Like, he's flashing more than just, like, goal scoring. Um, so, who knows? Um, I'm a big Artemonov guy. We had him right around, like, 12, um, I think, for yeah. smart scouting because he's got the game-breaking ability. Um, but understand the concerns. And the one guy that I have to mention after that that if he wasn't five foot 10, 170 would be an easy top 15 pick. Luke Misa at 40. He might be the best player in this draft where like playing and making decisions at top speed. He's a, it's so like some of these guys have insane hands, like how quick they are, especially a transition. But it's so it's like a different level when your brain matches that. Like you can think at top speed as well. He is by far, I would say, at least in the OHL, the top guy of that realm. Where like his brain operates at the same speed as his as his hands. So like even if yeah. he's got, so like on the spot, doesn't matter. Like he doesn't even need to be proactive with the puck. Like if you close it on him, he already knows where he's going um dynamic playmaking again and he's a phenomenal defensive uh center as well so i love luke visa again just the the fact that he is a five foot ten 170 pound center is going to give teams pause in terms of taking him really high but like look at the points too on like a decent yeah. mississauga team um but his ability to play at full speed um and decision making on the spot is like elite elite so i love luke visa i think we yeah. did talk about that too like well and i i gotta ask you, rankings. like it, it's not the same player by any stretch but luke Misa is a guy that gives me all of the riley height vibes a guy that's probably gonna get taken way later than he should and whatever team gets him is gonna like be so happy after the fact yeah i i mean it's interesting because like if you love Luke Beasley, you've watched him for a long time, you find a way to get him into your first round. I want to say we had him mid first. But Riley Height like, should have been a first rounder. Oh, yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same like, thing. Yeah. But insight, like you said, like this is a guy that probably belongs in the first round. Yeah. But the thing with Height, well, I feel like the consensus was at the very least, he's a first round pick. Um, and then I've he went of- to the last pick in the second. How does that happen? Right. And Luke Bisa had like I feel like a lot of the consensus just given those concerns with the size and everything. Like I've sure. seen most people pat him. Consensus is different. My point is the Yeah, the, yeah. No, I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like they're both gonna go late second, deserve to be first, but I- I'm gonna throw in one last one here then from Jason Howard. I think it's an interesting uh thought experiment, and then we'll wrap this shit. He asks, which prospect, if the Wild took them, would make Wild Twitter the most angry? A la, unfortunately, Charlie Strammel, who, again, we have <clears throat> hope for uh, rounding out, but Wild Faithful were definitely not polite about his draft. Give me the range. Like, where are they picking? I think that still does make it. While they're picking just outside playoffs. So let's call them 16. Who's a player they could take that fans would lose their mind in a bad way that Judd Brackett selects? (laughs) Uh, Oh, I like this. Either fucking... 
Cole Hudson or Eric Kivy. How are you? An undersized left shot defenseman with like crazy high end skill. <laughs> I feel like that yes. would send people. Into... That's literally exactly what our prospect pool is loaded with. I love it. Yep. That seems about right. <laughs> that feels like, like the honestly, one that people are like, are you fucking kidding honestly, me? <laughs> Aaron Kivy, how are you? I would be so happy personally. I just, I he's so fun. He's so fun. He rocks. He was Hudson is definitely not his older brother. So I'll probably not be as interested in that but i yeah i don't know it's been a very weird year for cole hudson even though like the flashes of like top top end playmaking from the back end you see it every once in a while but like there's big concerns yeah there you go sean crossgrove Cosgrove again, he's killing it. I never doubted Strammel for a second. He must be picks, playing an insane I amount of poker. <laughs> Cosgrove's <laughs> been in here the whole time. He's on at least six. And Mateo. Mateo's not playing poker. He's just hanging out. No, he's just Mateo's the one that brings uh, Cosgrove his comped beverages. So, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I I think we're. Uh, I think we're primed to wrap up here. It's been a long one, Z. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, to Cosgrove's point. He's been in and out. thought we'd quit 90 minutes ago. Holy we do. God. We did, too. We thought so. We thought we might. <laughs> we did it. We did the thing again. Three hours. I mean, yeah. no, that's not true, actually. Uh, I need to do that. It's two episodes. Still a lot, yeah. So... It's been real. Um, I don't know. You close us out. My brain's turning off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you really stuck around for uh, both episodes over uh, uh, three days. Wow. That's crazy. You're that's either crazy. awesome or you're a bot. We don't know. I am, yes. Uh, shout out to all the bots. Um, 641 bots. Shout out to them. No, well, in theory... Bots. <laughs> in theory, we'll see you next week. And I will see anyone in Minnesota going to the Final Four in person. In two weeks. Yeah, that's going to be so Two fun. fucking weeks. Oh, I man. We're going to have to record scared. like live together at this table in my basement yeah. on Wednesday night that week. That's going to be weird. It'll be very fun. It'll be funny as shit. I'll go back to my old days before I had the stand for the microphone. I'll just be holding it. This is what I used to do when I was by myself. It was unhinged. I would just be like, eh, fucking, oh, there's my dog. He's just coming Yeah, except you lean away from it, and it's like, oh, no. See, he's like 10 feet away from the mic. What's happening? Whoops. Yeah. My bad. My bad. All right. Nailed it. And uh, just across the room from me is Laura. So uh, I'll end it here, Z, with uh, Shaka Shooms. <laughs> <laughs> and Z just pissed his pants. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs>